is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Taboo subjects will be discussed and opinions aired. Yes. If you're easily offended by an open-minded nature of mass debate, then this show is not for you. Which is why I often start sentences in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how are you, Matt? Yeah, I'm good, you? Looking good, yeah, fit and slim. Uh, this is Tommy Boyd and Matt, Play Radio. For a, what night is it? Wednesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Good evening, uh, gentle listener, if you're listening in the United Kingdom. Good day, if you're listening around the world or on the podcast. Good day. Um, nice to be back here, uh, sitting in for James Whale, who's a geezer, isn't he? You hadn't met James before he came to work for Play Radio? No. 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 It's been an experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a uh, top man, James knows his onions. How are you, gentle listener? We're going to talk this evening about... I haven't told you this, Matt. We had a chat in the car park. No, we didn't. We had a fag in the car park. <laughs> and um, uh, I kept this up my sleeve, but this is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and you're not allowed to do it on radio, okay? Um, which is to get involved in politics. Uh-huh. Because it's occurred to me, and maybe this has occurred to you listening as well. By the way, hi, if you're on the Skype chat uh, pages, watching your conversations going by there. Good evening to you. Hello. Uh, maybe you can fix your mind on this one, besides chatting away to each other, which is cool. That's how the internet is. Uh, I'll remind how you can contact us, either by phoning or by Skype or by email, although you're probably a regular listener, so you probably have those details. But this is the thing I want to talk about, Matt. Okay? Have you ever voted? Yes. You have? Uh -huh. You're an active political person. Mm -hmm. Do you feel as though your vote's worth anything? No. No. Isn't, is well, it? I do now because the last uh, I, I'm voting for UKIP now. Okay, so I, I think right. more, you know, their yeah. support is going. Well, the smaller your party, the bigger your voice mm -hmm. in the party. It is the case, isn't it? Um, but I read somewhere recently that the countries with the lowest suicide rate are the countries that give the population the greatest say in the way the country is run. Oh, really? Where they have lots of referendums. Right. Um, well, countries like Sweden. Maybe they have no reason to commit suicide in Sweden. Mm. Anyway. They've got nice women in Sweden. There's that. Um, they're quite good at sport. Mm -hmm. But it, um, it occurred to me that, you know, you're less likely to feel pissed off about your life if you feel in control of it. Mm. So I think, bearing in mind what a wonderful thing the internet is, I mean, it's great, isn't it, for porn? <laughs> it's great for um, buying shit. <laughs> um, and it's great for just faffing and com conversing. Yeah. But it's quite empowering, isn't it? Because here we are on an internet radio station and we don't really have total control over what goes on and that's, for me, one of the attractive things about it. Mm. But I think the time is dawning when we need a political party that offers the members of that political party complete control over the policies that that party is going to pursue. And the best way of doing that is the internet. Before, I mean, if they'd had the internet 150 years ago, that's how they'd have been building the parties that, were, you know, that we now are stuck with. But I was wondering about seeing whether we could recruit some party members by this show on Play Radio, right. which is not a Play Radio thing, mm -hmm. so it's not Play Radio getting involved in politics. Sure, sure. It's us saying to people who are involved, well, first of all, what should we call the party? Mm. And what sort of colours should we have? What sort of flag? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but also start to form some policies, some sensible, interesting policies. I mean, for example, I believe it should not be compulsory for people to go to school. No. Why should it? Quite right. There's only two groups of people in this country who have to be somewhere against their will, and that's convicted criminals and school children. Mm. You know? Mm. Um, and I think they should be paid to go to school. Because if they're going voluntarily and they're getting paid, they're going to be a bloody sight better behaved in those classrooms than they are under the current circumstances. It's true, yeah. So there's one thought there. Okay, I think we need to shake up education. So there's that thought. And other little random thoughts I have, like, for example, if somebody is convicted of drink driving, why should they be banned from driving? It's drink that caused the problem, so why not ban them from drinking? Now, well, this yeah, is a really good, a good thought point, of mine. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you get done for drink driving, I would say you're not allowed to have a drink for a year. And how would you police that? Well, random alcohol tests, you know, they mm -hmm. get a phone call from the police station, you've got to go down to your GP in the morning, give a blood sample, that can detect whether you've got any alcohol in your system or you have had for the last, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks, yep. three months, and if, if you break that condition, of um, having been convicted of drink driving there and you're banged up. Yep. It's so serious stuff. And the great advantage of this fr 
thoroughly sensible idea, of course, is that people at the end of their 12 months might have a better liver. Well, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. what's the first thing you do if you're banned from driving and you realise that for the rest of the year you're going to have to take taxis and, and use the bus you're and the train? Your sorrows, you're going to you? drown your sorrows. You're going to drink more. Cool. I'll press that button. One. And then I do that. Hello. 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 Is that James Whale? Jimmy's, uh, where is he tonight? Uh, James, I believe he's on holiday. I couldn't tell you where. Maybe France. I know he likes France. My name's Tom. What's your name? All right, it's Linda. It's just that, um, my daughter's on the internet and we've been looking all over for him because he were on talk radio and, you know, we've been really missing him and he's not there anymore and we wondered, you know, if he's on a, another station or Oh, anything. you mean on Talk Sport you've been listening? Well, it, it, we, we don't actually listen it to it anymore now. We've started listening to music because it, it's not same without him there. Everybody else is boring. What's your name again? It's Linda. Linda. And where do you live, Linda? I live in Offset. In where? In Offset, uh, West Yorkshire. West Yorkshire, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Jimmy and Talk Sport have parted company. Right. And so, Jimmy, I call, keep calling him Jimmy, he wouldn't like that. James. Mm. J yeah. James. Yeah. Uh, now does some stuff on play radio but you must have known that otherwise you wouldn't have rung i mean you even no, knew the number. Well, I, don't, I don't know i don't actually know this number that i've rung i've just been given it from somebody what what is this number from the right interview? okay i'll explain this is a useful opportunity to position right. this media venture you're kind of on the radio at the moment have you ever phoned a phone-in program and gone on air before no no well you're on now i'm, on, I'm actually on air ah uh, sort of oh right on which uh, radio thing well it's internet radio Oh, it's on the internet radio. Yes. Um, you see, we haven't got a computer, like, to, you know... Well, how did somebody to tell you... Who told you to ring this number, then, and...? Uh, well, it's actually my daughter, because, we, you know, somebody, we phoned TalkSport, and yeah. then we were, um... He says, well, have a look at Google something or other. Well, so I, you Google James, and, you f and somebody found Play Radio and this telephone number, which is... Right. Oh, hang on a sec. What you've dialed is 01243... Yeah. 55 60 60. Yeah, that's right. right. Okay. And you're speaking to me. My name's Tommy Boyd. Tommy Boyd. Oh, yeah, I've heard your name. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, I have, yeah. Yes. Tommy yes. Boyd, yeah. Oh, okay, well, I've that's... actually got his um, uh, biography, that book, James Whale. Oh, yes. I read it from beginning to the end. Did I you? know everything about him. <laughs> yeah. Are you a reader? Are you a great reader of biographies, dear? Or just Jimmy? Well, I, I am with him, you know, and anybody that interests us, but I mean, we really, really think that he left Talks Park, because like I say, we used to go to bed and listen to him, and he, he had some really interesting things to say. I know, um, well, he's even more interesting now he's on the internet. All right. And the reason for that is because when you broadcast in commercial radio or, or yeah. the BBC, yeah. there are a number of limits on the things that you can say and do. Right. And those limits are not quite so tight on the internet. So you'll find... Right. So what you need to do, Linda, is get yourself a computer or... I or don't even know to work when I'm in my 50s. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know whether I'd be able to learn how to use them, but... Well, your daughter's got one, has she? Well, she's got one like that. Personally, I've never had one. I would like to. I would like to be able to uh, learn to go onto the computer. Well, get a well, hammer on your daughter there. Hammer, hammer your daughter up for a computer. You can get a computer now for, I know it's a lot of money, but for 250 quid, yeah. you can get a computer. That would mean that you'd be able to listen to internet radio for a start, but yeah. you'd also be able to do all the fun things that people do, like emailing. Have you ever sent an email? No. No, well, they're great, man. Because then you don't need a postman. Mm. It's just you see, see, these young people, you know, they tend to pick things up really quickly. Now, look, there's um, the trouble with people up north. You yeah. think that when you get to 50, you're old. Well, let me tell you, down in the south, 50 is the new 30. Oh, is it? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, dear. So, it's, what terms is he on then on this uh, program? Matt has the scheduling details at Play Radio. He is, <clears throat> excuse me, he's on every Monday and Tuesday night from 8 until midnight. Monday and Tuesday from 8 till midnight. midnight. And yeah. then on a Sunday afternoon slash evening, we put together a best of whale. So that between uh, 6 and 7 on a Sunday evening, it's, yeah. it's the last two shows cut up oh. into one. So you get a stack of whale. Now, right. what's, oh, your, what's your daughter's name? It's Laura. Laura. And is she in at the moment? She's actually, she doesn't live in our house. She lives in uh, Wakefield. No, but is she in, at home in Wakefield? 
Uh, yeah, right. cheers. What I need you to do, will you do me a favour, because I've been very generous with you, of course, because right. I'm not a kind man. Would mm -hmm. you Would you give her a ring? Put the phone down on me in a minute and give her a ring. Yeah. And tell yeah. her to give me a ring at the number that you've just rung. Right. And tell her that she, uh, a very nice man called Tommy wants to have a quick word. Right. Will you do that for me? I will, though. Because yeah, then I'll see whether uh, I can... can... I don't think she's going to be in, though. I'll, um, I think it's nine o'clock. Would it be all right for her to ring you at nine? God, yes. Eh? I said, God, yes. 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 Oh, that's great. It's just that I think she's had to go somewhere, but she'll definitely be in at nine, so... All right. If she'll ring you at nine, so I expect her to ring you then. Right, love. Oh, it's been very nice to listening to you anyway. ta -ra. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. There she goes. If you hit the drop button, there you go. OK, beautiful. So that's cool, isn't it? Uh, I've got an email from somebody says, Tommy Boyd is walking in the shoes of whale. Should he be? Is he good enough? Can he cut the mustard? Uh, bring it on. <laughs> uh, should the whale stay in France? Who is Tommy Boyd? It's a good question. I've often asked myself. Who is Matt? Do you know who you are? Um, I have absolutely no idea, but no. I'm hoping one day I'll be drunk enough to find out. I have this suspicion that when you die, there's this fleeting sudden moment when it all makes sense. <laughs> oh. But until that happens, we're screwed. Political party... Cyril the Wasp Wasp, I believe, uh, we need to start a humanity party, That's Cyril the Wasp. Humanity party? Make a note of that, Matt. I am doing. The humanity party. My idea is that instead of having, like, officials above everybody, like they had in the Nazi party and, you know, New Labour and the Conservatives and everything, is that everybody is an officer in the party and they can put up policies for discussion and then everybody votes on them. And if you don't want to vote, you don't vote. And if you do want to vote because it's something you care about, you vote. And then that way the party forms a manifesto put together by everybody in the party. So you've got total empowerment. And we're looking for interesting policy ideas um, and this idea that everybody's involved. So there's a suggestion from Cyril the Wasp. Cyril the Wasp Wasp. Um, there's a, an email from Lee who says, the woman on the radio just then is the reason why nobody past Watford should ever be allowed on the radio. Northern monkeys. It's a reasonable attempt at stirring shit, but yeah. not a great one. I read this from Phil Cornwall, Matt. Good evening, Mr Boyd. Great to hear you're back on Play Radio, if only for one guesting gig. I will have to catch up with the podcast as I'm working. I do get to listen to you most mornings on original as I'm rushing around getting the kids ready for school. What do you think of Stu and Matt's show on a Sunday, and is this going to be a one-off, or are we going to hear more from you on Play Radio? Yeah, I'm going to be a around, a regular kind of guest thing. He goes on, now Play Radio, I've got James Whale. All we need is you and Duncan Barkis back, and they can have a great talk station. Ready to take on the traditional radio stations. You never... You never know even Matt could eat, could get his own talk show. It's Phil Cornwall, uh, who's uh, emailed that from Rossendale in Lancashire. Thanks for that. Whilst, since you're on the emails, uh, Lee, uh, Phil, sorry, whilst you're on the emails, Phil, any idea about this notion of starting a political party? A gentle political party which will form its own policies. And, of course, some of them will be quite strange and mm -hmm. random, but that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yes. Is there any law that you would like... I would like to see it law that politicians change. don't get a second home and a big budget to decorate it. Well, that's the tabloid take on it, isn't it, really, Matt? I mean, they're, po they're pretty poor, most MPs, you know. <laughs> they are, man. I'd say, if I had two homes and 20 grand to spend on decorating one of them, I would not consider myself poor. Um, well, they are, really, compared to an awful lot of people like in industry. They earn, what they earn, 68, 70,000 an MP? And the reason they have two homes is because if you're an MP in Lancashire or Cornwall and you've got to work in Westminster, you've got yeah. another home, haven't you? You'd be away from your family all week, which well, is a bummer. Why, there's rooms in the Houses of Parliament, isn't there? No. No, you, well, it's not a hotel. It's not a hotel. It's a lovely spot for a hotel. Yeah, it's a five-star location. But have you been to the Houses of Parliament, then? Um, I've only gone by it, to be honest with you. You've never been inside? No, 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 never had the chance. Yeah, they don't have rooms. But they should. A building that big should have rooms. They're, but they're, it's not not that big. They do. There's no spare space in the Houses of Parliament. Oh, come on. You get rid of some of the dead wood, there's bound to be space. No, you go there, honestly. You have to go there to know what you're talking about. It's absolutely stifling and very, very crumbly and old and, um, and, and pretty sort of run down. Uh, although there's plenty of uh, red leather and, and mahogany, it's, it's pretty run down. No, they, 
Um, but there's uh, some expensive champagne in the bar as well. If no, this is this is the casual politics of uh, fictional envy. Uh, it's just not like that. Nobody. Let me tell you an important thing. Nobody's life is as easy as everybody else thinks it is. I, everybody I, else thinks everybody else has got it fairly easy. It's only them who are kind of struggling to to make sense of it and make ends meet. I don't think they've got it easy by any means. No, they haven't. They haven't. Uh, Peter Collins has email. Thanks for that. He says. It's play radio, by the way, obviously. I don't know why I position here. It's not as though you're randomly going up and down the dial. You know exactly what you've got, but it's force of habit. Uh, Peter says, I saw Timmy Mallet on Channel 4 the other night, and he was asked what he thought about Tommy Boyd. This is interesting. Mm. This is a guy I used to work with in television, who I can't say I liked a lot. Timmy Mallet's face changed from a smile to all I can say is a look of anger, and he refused to make any comment about you, Tommy Boyd. And when asked again by the Channel 4 presenter, he walked out of the studio in a fit of rage... I can't believe that. Timmy Mallet would never walk out of a studio. No, he needs <laughs> he all the studio he can get. dragged <laughs> away from the camera on more than one occasion. Anyway, can I ask you, Tommy Boyd, has there been any bad, bad blood between you and Timmy Mallet in the past, Peter from Birmingham? Yeah, I don't like him. I don't like him because um, he behaves unpleasantly, thinking that he mistakes unpleasant behaviour for being a bit of a character. Right. And he thinks that everybody thinks it's hilarious that he's um, faintly unpleasant to colleagues, in my opinion. The woman on the radio... <coughs> you read that one already. I've read that yeah, one already. Yeah, we've had these three. Oh, I'm seeing. So, the three emails. Three emails. That's up on Radio 2. Apparently Ken, in the morning, and he gets about one. <laughs> um, where are we? So, talking a little bit, yeah, if you like, about our uh, proposed... My proposal, that we start up some kind of political party, and we're looking for interesting policy things there. Um, I, for example, would stop um, councils spending a fortune cleaning chewing gum off the pavements because it's just not necessary. It's just absolutely unnecessary. Why? Call. I'll take a call. Thank you. Spotting that, dear man. Hello? You love Timmy Malik. Well said, boy. Well said. <laughs> take another call. I presume I have to go yep. drop and then voila. Hello, you're on Play Radio. It's Tommy and Matt here. Hello. Oh, hi there. My name's Leslie Druford. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm still well. Great. Right. I, I was, you just said about people who become characters to be obnoxious to people. Yeah. That bloody stand them at all. No. But what I, yeah, what I was going to say is, you were talking earlier about you won't actually know what happens after death until you're there. True. I totally agree with that because it would be like teaching a blind person what colours are. Yeah. You don't have the references. There we are. I agree. I have a a sneaking suspicion that when we die and look at the stupid, meaningless lives we lead, we'll look down on ourselves in the same way that we look down on animals for apparently being so thick and shallow. Mm, that's what exactly. I suspect. That's what I suspect. That's a bit, uh... Listen, Leslie, um... It's another level of intelligence, though, isn't it? It's... Well, I think it's to, more to do with spiritual intelligence than, um... than, uh, intellectual intelligence. That's what I suspect. I hope it's the case, anyway. Otherwise... I but I want to know, though, but... Th there are animals out there, particularly dogs, who are yes. more pleasant than some humans. So what happens to them? What happens to dogs? Yes, it's a, an issue, that, isn't it? Apparently dogs don't go to heaven, according to the Christian faith. I don't know what Islam says about that. Well, they, they eat them, don't they? Eat dogs. Oh, that, oh, no, that's a Chinaman, isn't it? Allegedly, if you, if you want to furnish your mind with everything that the tabloids chuck at you, yeah, it's the Chinese Koreans, I think. Mean, I don't know. I don't well, know. The old chubby brown joke being, you yes. got a book, How to Walk Your Dog. <laughs> I heard a good one the other day, which, um, I do a joke line on this breakfast show that I do on Original, and the guy rang in, and he said, this is a good joke, I hadn't heard this one before, it goes, um, my mate Dave is addicted to drinking brake fluid, but he says he can stop any time he wants. <laughs> That's a good one. It's Isn't not it? like one of those you get on text message. No, it's a good one. He can stop any time he wants. I do like <laughs> that one. Thanks for your call, Leslie. Uh, delicious talking to you. I um, must rush now and take this call. Good evening. Who's this? Hello, Tommy. It's Shaduk here. Hello, Shaduk. I know you're talking about meaning of life. Oh, yes. I tell you meaning of life. It's all shit, shit, shit. And then you die. 
<laughs> that was Woody Allen, wasn't it? Uh, Life's a bitch, and then you die. I don't know. I'm not. I've not seen much of Woody, Woody, Woody Allen. Woody Allen? No. He's quite funny. He's very professional, Woody Allen. Are you still there, Shadook? No, he's gone. But he's we gone. have got Paul on Skype. Oh, cool. Hello, Tommy. Hey, Paul. Hello. How are you? I'm really well, actually. I think. Yeah. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Are you picking me up loud and clear? Sounds fantastic. Sounds like you're in the room with us. Oh, does it really? Oh, brilliant. This is the um, first time I've uh, used Skype before, so um, it's interesting to, you know, see how it works on a radio. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. It's good to hear you, um, you know, sort of back again. I, we used to listen to you um, years and years and years ago on Talk Sport. Yep. Um, again, big mistake when you left there, and now James Wells has gone. I'm sure Talk Sport are going to, you know, suffer, you know, badly for that. Well, uh, possibly, possibly. Um, you'd like to think that in your own case, that if you get far shafted by a radio station, that their ratings dip enormously, but it doesn't usually happen for a variety of reasons. In the case of Talk Sport, because there's not much of an alternative to Talk Sport, is there? There isn't any other chat station, certainly nationally, that offers that kind of um, no, good, good yeah. Radio Five is solid, but it's you know you don't get much action on Radio 5, do you? No, certainly not in the evenings as well. Um, you know, when you, because I mean, m me and my wife always used to listen to talk sport mm. um, in the evenings. And I remember, it's got to be 13, 14 years ago, I was building an extension in the garden. And um, it was during the daytime and I used to listen to you and your um, wonderful hour and yeah. all the rest of it. You used to kept me going for about six weeks building this extension. On the back of our house. <laughs> How is it? Has that mould crept in yet? <laughs> well, the extension's finished, but just like you moving on from Talk Sport, we moved on from that house, but oh. the extension's still standing. Did it, did it put anything on the value? Uh, yeah, probably about five grand. Yeah, nice yeah. one. Did you actually right, build it all it. yourself? No, well, I, I got um, different people round to do different bits. Um, so I got someone round to do the footing, someone round to do the brickwork and the roof, and then I did all the internal plastering and, you know, the roof inside what a, what, and so what, what on. What a very pleasant project, it sounds. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was really good, and we saved ourselves some cash as well because it, it, we were given estimates of sort of twelve to 15000 to do it, um, and we ended up getting it done for about seven. Did um did any of the neighbours neighbours give you grief about planning? Um, no, we were very fortunate actually because we were an end terraced at the time. Okay. And um, our next door neighbours, as soon as we moved in, we made sure we made friends. <laughs> nice one. Because <laughs> we knew we wanted the extension. Nice one. Now, what room in the house are you in? Can I just get your geography quickly before we pay the rents? Yeah, I'm in a three-storey house at the moment, in the bedroom, wife sitting on the bed watching the telly, and I've got my headphones on, talking to you on my computer. My wife's looking at me as if I'm absolutely mad, because obviously she can't hear you. Fabulous. All good fun, isn't it? Well, I'm really grateful that you made contact. It's really nice to talk to you. Um, stop listening to me for five minutes and go and, give your, go and give your wife a little nuzzle, wherever she likes being nuzzled. Yeah, that will take at least ten. Okay, we'll go for ten then. See you later, Tommy. Grand to talk to He's you. He's optimistic, isn't he? What a nice man. Yeah. Cool. And that was somebody who Skyped us, uh, which is on Paul, Skype. Yeah. Play dot radio dot UK. UK. Okay. Play to UK. Headlines. The oldest son of the back from the dead canoeist says his world was crushed when he was told of his father's death. Mark Darwin and his brother Anthony have been giving evidence against their mother, Anne. She denies all charges against her. A suspect in the Madeleine McCann case has settled a libel bid over newspaper claims he was involved in her disappearance. A number of British papers are thought to have agreed to pay Robert Morat a total of half a million pounds. Soaring bills for petrol and food are being blamed for rocketing inflation. The latest figures show it's shot up to 3.8%. And British Airways is warning passengers will have to deal with higher fares and fewer flights. Chief Executive Willie Walsh says price rises are absolutely inevitable because of the economic climate. Clayton UK weather. OK, light rain continuing south-eastwards overnight, unless you're listening in Korea. 
perhaps turning moderate as it clears Kent later. The rest of the UK will see clear spells developing with rain or showers in the northwest. Wednesday, dry and sunny in the south of England and near the east coast, but turning cloudy later. Elsewhere, cloud and rain will gradually spread eastwards to affect the rest of the UK. You're up to date on Play 2 UK. Sunday night just got better on Play 2 UK. Hello there, this is Sean Williamson. All right, then, it's it's Barry from EastEnders. Don't you ever shut your great, big, fat cake hole up. If you're listening to me now, that means you've missed me. But don't worry, yes, you can hear me again at playradiouk.com slash podcast. Hershey's Half Hour. 30 minutes of top-flight entertainment expertly crammed into two hours. Sundays from four on Play 2 UK. Women give lots of reasons why they keep smoking when they're pregnant. My mum smoked when she was pregnant, and I turned out all right. If I try and stop, I'll stress out, and that's worse for the baby. But there are lots more reasons why you should stop. Because every cigarette you smoke damages your unborn baby, reducing the blood flow through the placenta for 15 minutes. That's why the NHS offers free support to pregnant mothers and their partners who want to quit smoking. I stopped because it's better for the baby. And me. For help and support to go smoke free, call the NHS Pregnancy Smoking Helpline on 0800 169 9169 or visit www.nhs.uk slash go smoke free. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. And uh, Fat Steve has Skyped. Is that you, my man? Yes, that is me. Can you see me? Yeah, uh, it's a nice setup you've got there. Just quick word with Matt. Matt, can everybody see Steve, or do we have to? Hey, we'll do it in a second. Okay. If you're listening and you haven't got the pictures up, you need to go to nttbs.com. N for no, not that. N for what? Nicholas. Hmm. That's safe. ttbs.com and click watch. And there's Steve. Up. Yes, yes. that's a, that's a studio you've got there. Yeah, and a glass mostly. Of... Sorry, I, I missed that. Uh, and, a, and a nice glass of Cabernet. Oh yes, yeah, that's that's a good eye. Either you read that, saw the color, and guessed, or you're just psychic. Now you look like a Cabernet man. <laughs> where are you? That's where... funny because no. Forgive me. Where's where that? I was going to say, where are you th uh, this evening, skyping us from? I'm down in my basement studio. Um, which I mostly use for like video after effects work. Yeah. Um, but I also record the band down here, and we've got a rehearsal at five thirty. Okay. One of the difficult things about having a studio underneath the same roof that you live in, of course, as you well know, is that you can be there for twenty-three hours a day if you're not careful, because it, it is fun, isn't it? Oh yeah, especially because um, I don't know if I've mentioned before. My wife's an attorney, and she's on a trial right now in Minneapolis, and she'll be gone for the next three weeks. Ooh. I'll be surprised if I leave. Yeah, what uh, what what sort of a court case is that? Are, are you able to uh, say? Yeah, yeah, you would love uh, love this one. It's uh, well, she's uh, representing a drug company. Um, she's one of a myriad number of attorneys, but they're being sued. They make a drug called. Um, well, I won't mention what it's called, but it's a drug that cures Parkinson's okay. or helps with the symptoms, and people say it causes compulsive gambling. And people say it causes compulsive gambling. Yeah. I know, this is such a talk radio subject. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Well, I, on the face of it, but remember, we're talking about the world's most litigious uh, nation. Am I right, Steve? Yeah, I mean, uh, but, but, you know, to be fair, in the warnings yeah. that when your doctor gives it to you, it says it causes compulsive behavior. And <laughs> they've got some good cases and some bad cases. There is the case of the priest who never gambled before, <laughs> went on the drug, gambled all his church's money away, then went off the drug, never gambled again. Oh, come on. This is fantastic, man. No, I know. It's, I mean, that's just not a very good case for them, that one. But some of them, the guy gambled his whole life, and then, you know, he just gambled it all away when he was on the drug. Are they... Is anybody able to establish any other forms of compulsive disorders that are generated, allegedly, by this Parkinson's drug, well, you, or is it just um, the casino and the I, track? I went, to a, I went to a website um, for one of the lawyers who's soliciting business to sue the drug company 
and it says sexual addiction, and there was one other type of, I think maybe overeating or something, mm. food addiction. So with Parkinsonism then, and there have been drugs around for a couple of decades which can alleviate the symptoms, but they always tend to cause, as I understand it, having talked to a couple of people who deal with Parkinson's, they tend to cause a slowing down of your intellectual apparatus. Um, well, this... no, it's more the motor functions than the intellectual <laughs> apparatus. Yeah, yeah, so the shakes aren't so bad. But the guy that I was talking to on a train, uh, he said, you know, he, if he takes the drug... That, this was ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. It would slow his mind down a little bit. This drug is presumably marketed as being more sophisticated because it only... Right, well, yes, that's it. That's, you're exactly right. This one doesn't slow down the intellect. But it does impede uh, certain constraining factors, certain constraining mechanisms within the brain, which is why people on the drug are, are free from shakes and tremors um, but find themselves wanting to go to the track or jump the nearest yeah, yeah. bunch of bones. It's like dopamine or the serotonin or something like that you mm. know it's one of those myriad things. And she's mm. going to be away for three weeks as a fully paid attorney. <clears throat> You're going to be able to afford some more kit when she gets home. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Maybe a few new guitars <laughs> and yeah. a couple more bottles of Bordeaux. Hey, that Les Paul electric guitar looks good. We've got our eye on that in our house. What do you play, Steve? Uh, I have um, an Epiphone uh, DOT, which is like um, the Gibson ES-335, you know, the Chuck Berry style. Okay. And I have a Les Paul Jr. Okay, okay. Les Paul became a guitar name, but he was credited by some people as making the first ever pop record with Mary Ford, wasn't it? Well, I Love You or P.S. I Love You or something? I think it was called How High the Moon. Oh. Okay. And it, it, it just... Uh, he's still alive. Is he really? Good for him. Well, I say good for him. I, think. I say good for him. Aren't rock musicians meant to be uh, pointing their toes at the ceiling around about their early 40s? Or is... Well, yeah, that, <laughs> that's... I just read that in an interview with Slash. They're saying, well... Do you regret not having lived the same kind of life as your idol, Les Paul, who's made it to 93? And he's like, well, you know, when I go, I'll go. Yeah. So the band are coming around at 5 o'clock. Where are you, Steve, in, in, on planet In Atlanta. Earth? In Atlanta. Delightful talking yeah. to you. I'm really grateful for your you five too. minutes. I envy you that glass of sure. cab. Catch you again sometime. Bye-bye. Amazing. Amazing. What a nice guy. He is a nice guy. Sounds like a nice life, too. Married to an attorney. That sounds like a good life sitting a in a studio. Sitting in a studio with a glass of Cabernet waiting for the band to turn up. He's got it cracked. Good evening. Uh, on the telephone Hello. lines. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. I can hear you. Yeah. Um, you're a classic example, Tommy, of uh, everything I touch turns to dust. Because I started listening to you in around sort of October time. And then you left. Left. Play radio. Well, Oh, and it disappeared. Yes. Yeah. So, I have a, a question for you. Okay. Um, you went from doing um, things where you had phones to um, what you're doing now with not a lot of phones in, I don't think. I've, well, I've heard a few shows. What, what's it like not dealing with matters anymore, like me? Um, what's it like not doing anything is a really difficult question to answer. <laughs> no, what's, it, what's it like not... Um, Dealing with, like, radio callers and stuff like that. Um, okay. I, I'm not sure whether the question has a sound basis in fact, because I, I, we, we've taken, we've been on the air for 35 minutes, if on the air is the right word. Uh, we've been on the net for 35 minutes and we've had um, stacks of input from people. Okay. And we haven't had any nusses yet, as in people with ludicrous views, or people who yeah. find me very annoying. I enjoy those calls, people who find me annoying, People who want me fired or shot or beaten up or just want to get me. I enjoy those calls. It, and uh, I find I'm, it's I'm quite... sorry to disappoint you, then. Could you say that again? I missed you. Sorry. Yeah, sorry to disappoint you, then. Well, you can have a pop if you want. <laughs> no, that's okay, Tommy. Is it? You're not going to take me on. I don't blame you. I wouldn't take me on. No. No. Where, what's your name again? Sorry? It's Chris from West Wickham. Chris from West Wickham. Oh, hey, Chris. You still in Tenerife? I am, unfortunately, yeah. But I have managed to um, 
get my father to book me a ticket to uh, two weeks early to come home. But you haven't managed to get your grand to get on the internet yet? Um, well, I just tried listening on dial-up, but it keeps cutting out every two seconds, so... Uh. Uh, well, why, what are you doing in Tenerife on the internet? Why aren't you out there in some of those mad bars? <laughs> um, Matt can probably explain it better than I, than I can, but I'm on the wrong side of the island, basically. <laughs> well, why are you on the wrong side of the island, man? Because all that, all that stuff's in the south and I'm in the north. Why? Because um, my grandmother lives here, and I kind of used to enjoy it, but now for some reason I'm not enjoying it. So well, I'm, not uh, for some reason. There must be a reason. You can't not know I what know, the reason is. He's well. 18 now. Yeah, I guess the, the last few times I went there, I didn't really have much to do, and no. now I'd have loads to do if I was in England. Like listen to this, for instance. Which you're doing. Hmm? Which you're doing. Yeah. Why have I, you I, rung? I can't. Why? Why it's have right? you? Why have you rung? What was your motive for ringing? You thought, I'll uh, ring, play radio, yeah, well, I, because... I, I, well, I was thinking... Yes? Because you used to take calls, and now you don't, on your um, other show that you do. And I was just wondering, you know, how, how you felt, like, as a presenter, not having the calls anymore. Uh, are you referring to the Is Breakfast show not getting as many calls as a, a Southern Counties or a talk sport show? Yeah, that's what, basically what I'm trying to say. Well, you, but people don't ring up at breakfast time, they're too busy. So right. I don't ask for calls, I don't expect them. You've got to understand the, the sort of biological clock of your audience, which of course is an interesting challenge on the internet, because we just had Steve there, didn't we, in Atlanta, yeah. where I guess it's um, something four like two or afternoon. three or four yeah. in the afternoon. So he's on one kind of speed, although I noticed he was drinking Cabernet, so good for him. But if you're broadcasting conventionally, you know exactly the wherewithal of your listener, because if you're doing a breakfast show, it's early in the morning. And early in the morning, nobody's got time for a ten-minute chat on the phone. If they have, you hardly want them to air, because they've got too much time on their hands for 7.30 in the morning. You know, your typical listener is, is, is falling out of bed, rushing around, cleaning teeth, having a quick shave, getting out of the house, getting in the car, and sitting in a traffic jam. So... You know, you're not going to get calls, and I kind of don't want them. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to talk to you again. And you, me. fella. Yeah. Thanks for that in Tenerife. What's our number? Our number is oh one two four three double five. No, it's not. It's uh, fifty five sixty sixty. You can text. Are we getting texts? No, not no really, we don't no, really do texts. No, no. Well, if you're already on the internet listening to us, why, yeah, why yeah, would you pay exactly. to send us a message? Yeah, so am I missing emails? We've got a couple. Uh, you do, you've got four there, four okay. or five even, on an account. Darcy emails, if you've got a mail, I'd be interested to hear any thoughts you have on the credit crunch. Any ideas where all the money's gone? That's from Darcy. Credit crunch then, Matt. Yes. Your take. Any, any My take, to be honest. Original thoughts? Um, I'm not really feeling any credit crunch. Okay. Apart from the fact that petrol's gone up. Hugely. Um, and... But, but the price of jeans has gone down. Well, this is yes. what people don't take into consideration, you know? There are so many things that are ludicrously cheap nowadays. Have you been to a department store and seen how cheap you can buy a DVD player now for? Fifteen quid. Fifteen bloody quid. Yeah. And when do people quote that in the cost of living thing? They don't, because journalists need to be going, oh, you should be very frightened. Oh, you should be ever so frightened, because the world's coming down on you like a ton of bricks, because petrol's up to 129 a litre, and because a loaf of bread will now cost you 99 pence. But what they're not saying is you can buy a pair of jeans for 9.99 in Tesco's. You can. Yeah. You can buy three saucepans for 4.99. You know? So much stuff is so much cheaper than it was, but they're not going to talk about that. People are still buying these things, even though there's a credit crunch on. What I want to know is who's the geezer who came up with the phrase credit crunch? It was de it's, a, it's a piece of alliteration. It's not a recession yet. You know... Isn't, isn't a recession the, all, all my understanding, and it is, you know, it's, it's fairly limited in, in recession-type things. I was very young when the major one happened, but as far as I understand it, a recession is merely so a word the government uses to scare you all into not spending. A recession, actually, is something that can be calculated mathematically. Right. If uh, industrial growth divided by gross domestic product uh, is, is less than a certain amount uh, per month on annum, then it's a recession. Right. I don't know what the exact calculation is, but well, you can say categorically that? Um, that the recession is taking place. Economists, uh, based on the notion that an economy that isn't moving forward is necessarily moving backwards. Right. 
and once it starts to move backwards, then people have to... Yeah, it's, exactly, it's receding. So the governments are have to focus their mind on doing something about it. Let me just take the next call quickly, and then we'll get some more emails. Hello. Next one. Next Good one. evening, Tommy. Who's that? It's G-Man Jr. <coughs> Hello there, G-Man. How are you? It's good to hear you back on Play Radio, can I say that? You're kind. It's good. Um, interesting you talking there about credit crunch and things being cheaper than, than you know, like things like saucepans and jeans and, and things like that. Electronics. But isn't, isn't the electronics thing just because, you know, obviously technology moves forward and as redundant technology becomes cheaper, new technology takes its place? I mean, isn't that just, you know, the price of economic progression? You know, DVD players are very 1999 or very 2002, sorry. It's still what um, we're spending money on. And, w and when the journalists tell us what we're spending money on, they miss out the things that are cheaper. And they do that deliberately, because otherwise their story wouldn't be so bombastic. True, but then you, you mentioned the MP stuff earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know whether you read some of the stuff that was being bought. You know, Jordan Brown charged the, the paying public for his Sky television. Nah, that, that's crap. You don't believe that, nah. or you just think that's, that some that's journalist in Whopping deciding, I know, I'll stick yeah, that down? it's absolute crap. Like this morning, they had Jackie Smith, the Home Secretary, saying that people should be thrown out of their council houses if their children misbehave. And she didn't say that. Is that, was she misquoted, or was it... Was it was it plain that she just didn't say it? And There's no that news up? around, G man. There's no news around, and these people are desperate to sell their newspapers, so they're prepared to spin anything out that they can, and so they do, and so they do, and more fool anybody who believes it. The problem is though is that that's a lot where a lot. I mean, you know, you say that that's where a lot of people get their information from. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I know I know you no longer work in London, but I know you have in your life, and if you work in London now, the the, the, the the seats of trains are strewn with the metro and yeah. and the evening news, and they're all very similar. Yeah. They they kind of give you the news in very little bits, yeah. um, and they give you these kind of you know sort of like flashpoint stories yeah. to pick up on. So I mean, it's interesting that you say that, that a lot of it's made up because those guys have an awful lot of pages to fill, yeah. and they pack the news into little bits. Chunks, yeah. So I often wonder how much of it is real news and how much of it is I've got to fill five pages full of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I used to work for Associated Newspapers. I'll tell you how it works. One of my early jobs was going through the... I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just pay the rent. You stay there? Indeed. Sorry, I know you're paying for the call, but... No, it's okay. The commercials are very interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ellington Lodge Hotel at the Concord Club, a unique place to stay. Going on a cruise or flight? Why not take advantage of the free short-term parking we offer to residents and extend your holiday by a night or two? Ellington Lodge is situated two minutes from Southampton Airport and Parkway Station, just off the M27 at Junction 5 and a short taxi ride from the Southampton Cruise Terminals. For more information, visit our website, theconcordclub.com. For perfect personalised cards for any occasion delivered through the letterbox, go to playradiouk.com forward slash moonpig. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Now, I'm just experimenting with the equipment. Um, <laughs> holding up a sign. Where were we? I've got G-Man on the line. So, this was one of the jobs that I had to do, was go through all the local newspapers and find stories that could be turned into national stories. Right. Okay, and this involves a certain amount of imagination. So one example for you, concrete example. Okay. You're a journalist, all right? You're desperate for find something to put in the paper. And this is 30 years ago when there was a lot more news around. And I found a wall fell down in Lincolnshire. And it was in a local paper. Wall falls down, okay? Mm. Carried on looking through all the various other newspapers because I had to read them all. It was blinding work. Number of faulty irons that start blazers. Anyway. <laughs> and I found another wall that had gone down, right, in Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, if you're a journalist... An epidemic. <laughs> uh, no, spate. Oh, spate. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so I got hold of this and I, I turned it into spate, right? It's a spate of walls falling down, right? I think I managed to invent another one, okay? So this is a proper spate now, right? Yeah. Now, how do you turn that into a full page or a double page? What's the key thing that you need to get to turn spate of walls falling down into something that's going to make everybody, especially Daily Mail list readers, go... An expert in, you know, someone... We did get an expert, but not before we made it a... scare story. Ah. Uh, right, The Daily now, Mail special. How did we make it a scare story? I learnt at the foot defective of a genius... Defective bricks or something, or defective, defective equipment? Defective bricks! You're <laughs> good! You're good! Now, what did we go for with defective bricks? Because I found out that both of the walls were built 
late forties, early fifties. So what were the defective bricks? Uh, foreign. No. Asbestos. No. Keep going, anybody. Uh, what I invented was, was it that something to do with the war? Was yes. it because of women making them rather than men? <laughs> I can't believe you no. made up that story. No, 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 no. What I made up was, all right, that the bricks were possibly, possibly, you stick possibly in, nobody reads it. Yeah. Possibly bricks which were reclaimed from German bombings. Oh. All right? And Dresden therefore... And places like that. No, no, no. British, British places that were bombed. Oh, I see br Germans bombing bricks. And what they oh. did was sometimes, you know, if you had a, if you had a bombed out row of houses... Okay, rather than just throw all the bricks away, they'd reclaim some of them and build walls. <laughs> okay? So then we've got the expert in telling you how to look for the, here comes the next buzzword, telltale signs. Oh, yeah. Okay? <laughs> that your wall might be built out of previously bombed houses. And then we flirted with the idea of suggesting that maybe there was an element of um, mysticism about it. Because right. it was bad luck. To build walls out of other people's bombed out homes. How about that? I, uh, to be honest, how you're not editing a national newspaper, I've no idea. Now, see, you, but you, do you see the kind of level of. But bollocks, I see how the paranoia bollocks. builds, how you can just escalate it. It had to have a fear factor, otherwise, there wasn't a full page and a half in it. Yeah. And of course, it had to have an expert, and you get an expert, you know, you get an expert, you pay them. Yeah. They'll say anything. What do you want me to well, say? You get any builder can tell you about how to build a wall and therefore how it's built badly and uh, stuff like that. Exactly. So. Exactly. So, uh, look, the truth of the matter is, MPs oh. are not having new bathrooms put in right, left and centre at the taxpayer's expense. They're just not. Um, uh, there are one or two who will abuse. Yeah. And, and the truth of the matter is, you find that those for whom abuse is more or less accepted tend to be conservative politicians. That's a simple fact. Was it not the, uh, the Wintertons? Yes. Who, it was discovered, were being paid to rent a flat off themselves. Yeah. There and was they, the one, and they, there was and they, the and they said, well, you know, they said, in their fairness, they said, we simply didn't understand the rules. So we there apologize. was another one that said that was the one that was paying his family. Paying, and paying a nanny. Yeah. As a secretary. Because you're allowed a secretary if you're a politician. And a lot of them apparently pay their wives to be their secretary purely because it makes sense. Those that don't want to have affairs, for instance, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. like to keep the wife around so that they don't get tempted. Sure, but the danger is that we, we, we like to walk away with the idea that all our... We love to hate our MPs. I think it's a Freudian thing. We vote mm. them in and then we loathe them. We choose a government and then we despise them. Or in the case of, except, of course, in the case of Gordon Brown. We haven't chosen Gordon Brown to be our leader. Uh, the Labour Party chose him to be our Prime Minister after we elected Tony Blair. I think personally, I, c I can't work out with Gordon Brown whether he was a genius in calling off the election or an idiot. Because either he's a genius because he realised he was going to lose and he knew he didn't have to be elected, he, didn't knew he, he knew he didn't have to do it, mm. or he's an idiot because he could have won and now people are realising he's rubbish I think and he's going to lose anyway. I can't work out yet. I probably, you probably won't know till the election. No, but it's a good call. I think uh, he missed out by about 48 hours. Right. I can't remember what the issue was that suddenly turned turned things against him. But in I think the... ironic, was it Northern Rock? It might that was, that was around like that, that time. I think it was Northern Rock. It was around about the time that the, there was intense speculation that there was going to be a snap election. All these mm. phrases that journalists love, because they're short words, you see. You'll notice if you're a journalist, by the way, police always swoop. Yeah. And, and nobody attempts to do anything they bid. All these small words that, you know. Um, but something happened around about the 48 hours between Gordon Brown being almost certain to call a general election and then calling it off, mm. which queered his pitch. And I can't remember what the incident was. David Cameron was obviously centre stage with, with it. Um, and if uh, Brown had called the election and then that incident had taken place, then he almost certainly would have lost. So maybe David Cameron, if he was instrumental in putting the knife in around about that time, he may regret it more than anybody else because he could be our current Prime Minister. And at least he would have been elected. I've got one general knowledge question for you. OK. Since the Second World War... Right. What percentage of our Prime Ministers have actually been elected by the public? I'm going to say about 70, because I can think of at least three that haven't. It's less than that. Gosh. 
It's getting on. It's getting on. War, getting, on had? getting on for less than half our prime ministers have been voted by in by the public. The rest of them have been appointed. I know within. some like Churchill was a war prime minister, so he wasn't elected. He was appointed. I Churchill know that was chosen. Churchill was chosen. He wasn't I know elected. That, um, I know that Major wasn't chosen, but then won the election. So I don't know how that worked. Well, he, he's, he's a prime minister. Logic. He's a prime minister who wasn't chosen. Gordon Brown is a prime minister who wasn't chosen. M Major did win an election. He did as an incumbent. He did win an election. Yeah. So that kind of balances that out. But I'm so I'm, well. I'm not surprised because politics is all about who you know, not what you know. You know, yeah. it, it, there is very much the old boys' club. And it's yeah. interesting you mentioned about talking about starting. A, a, you know, I know you were jokingly saying about a political party. Well, was I joking? Well, no. But I mean, you mention it. But in this day and age, when there have been a rise in kind of the, the minority parties, you know, the Green Party, the Independence Party, UKIP, and other ones, I wonder whether we will see the emergence of a party other than the, the main three. That, that gains a considerable amount of power. Well, the internet would be the place for it to happen, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's probably likely to be. You're so. going to join the party then? Well, why not? Is well, there a cabinet position open? No, we're just going to. Uh, we're going to. I'm looking for a hundred members to start the whole thing off, and we'll just kick a few policy ideas around, and we'll see how many sensible people we have. Because the one thing about the one drawback about the internet, although it, it can be quite good fun, is that you get an awful lot of people who think they're funny. Who aren't? I never claim to be that. No, and you get an awful lot of people being a lot braver than they would be to your face. Just ask Matt; he'll say I'm not funny. No, it's been nice talking to you. It's been nice talking to you, Tommy. Take Thanks care. Good chat. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Bless him. Nice man. Um, there's lots of chat going on on the Skype yes. chat page. Do we? Do you like to track that, or can um, you track that and give us the gist? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know bollocks. if anybody can give the gist about what some of these guys write about. Um, Gary says about 45% of John Major was directly elected. Uh, apparently his ankles and legs were constitutionally appointed. <laughs> uh, Vicky prefers to watch Pimp My Ride to, uh, to listening to Tommy Boyd, according to Headless. I'm sure Vicky will disagree. Um, so yeah, it's just, it, they, tra they trade insults, they talk it's rubbish, they... That sort of stuff. Yeah. Peter from Birmingham has emailed studio at playradio.com thank you for this hi Tommy remember you from the talk sport days when your hair was virtually grey <laughs> can you tell me now that you dye your hair a nice shade of brown and uh, will you say when you get into your 60s give up <clears throat> the hair dye and grow old gracefully well this is I've got some bits of grey if you're watching go to if you're not watching go to nttbs.com I don't know if this is worth any, anybody can see this, but my hair is, is, there's a few little bits of grey there, very, very little grey there. But it's quite a good hairline, no ball patch, as far as I know. I'm just, if you're not watching, I'm just putting the camera at my head and having a look. And the hairline is not bad for... That's not bad. It's not bad. bad. Mine. Not bad for 56. Well, I'll be, I'm nearer 60 than 50. Better than mine. Are you, are you worried about your hair? No, I'm not worried about it, but... Uh, no, that's all right. Uh, no, those two little avenues there are normal for oh, a, right, okay. a man in his early 20s. Emails, then. Uh, Peter Collins has emailed. Do I go for the emails from the bottom up or the top down? Um, I... Bottom... Oh, wait a minute. No, I can see. Yes, I can see. So, Lee Henderson, I've read... Uh, oh, uh, years and years ago, Lee says, I was on Mallet's Mallet and Bonk and Boob. My mad, my dad wanted to belt Timmy Mullet for being a twat, and you calmed my dad down, did I? Um, I can well understand that, because uh, Timmy Mullet is capable of being very irritating. This from unsigned Alan. Great to hear you again. Used to listen to you on that unmentional TS station. You were spot on about Pillock Mallet. Why didn't somebody whack him on the head with that hammer beggar's <laughs> belief? And this from... BB. BB. Ah. Great to be able to listen to you again. Life's been pretty crazy the last six months, resulting in sleepless late nights and late mornings. So I've missed a lot of your breakfast shows live. That's Anne in Devon, mm -hmm. who, um, you know, when you broadcast nowadays, you do actually make friends with some listeners. Yeah. And Anne's a friend. Mm. I've never met her. Just wondering if I want to. I think I do, and then again I don't. 
It's just one of those things, isn't it? You're never really sure what the person behind the yeah. Generally speaking, when you is. when you, when you meet famous people who you thought were brilliant and you find out that they're just ordinary, yeah, that shouldn't be a disappointment, but it is. Yeah, the only famous people I've met who really were worth it was Muhammad Ali, who is just worth oh, it, yeah, yeah. and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, blimey, he's worth it. <laughs> he's seriously different person, different different type of human being. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quickly through the e emails. What do you call a person with no arms or legs who swims the channel? A clever dick. Could you please warn your listeners that listening to internet radio on your N95... Just click OK for that. Just, is that a Skype call? No, it's a request. That's a request for what? Uh, to, be added, to be added to the Skype okay. contacts so that they may join in the conversation. OK. I'm just in the middle of Steve's email, which I'll get back in, because I don't know what it, where it's going. He says... Could you please warn your listeners that listening to internet radio on your N95, something that you recommend for mobile listeners, taxi drivers and the like, can cost you money. He goes on to say, my bill was £219, £3 a megabyte, my normal bill is £30 to £40. Please tell them to make sure they have a data package a data package on their contract mm. to limit their liability. Basically what this guy's done is just tuned into streaming radio on his N95 without checking that he's paying a bill that allows him to have a certain amount of downloads and streaming per month. Um, if you tend to use your N95 to stream or download things from the internet then you'll need a specific contract for that. You know, you did that so well it was almost as though you were reading it, but you weren't. No. So you, you are a broadcaster. <laughs> Fantastic! After a year, Tommy! Scouts <laughs> J emails. Great to hear you again. Looking at you now on the cam. Man, don't you ever age. Looking well, fella, I've got to say. Hear you on play. Takes me about ten years when I was out of work, teenager, waking up in the early afternoon to the angry hour. Happy days. Fantastic. Looking forward to the rest of the show. Any chance of back-to-back -back happy and angry hours? Thank you for that. So, so well, I'm guessing, then, that one hour was happy and the other hour was angry. Yeah. Um, the angry hour was very popular, or the irritable hour, when people would ring in with things that pissed them off, basically. Right, yeah. The wonderful hour was on a Friday afternoon, and it was a nice sort of, um, quite heartwarming antidote. We just talked about the things that were wonderful, like remembering to put a beer glass in the freezer mm -hmm. before you go off to work, so that when you come home and you have that can of lager that you've been looking forward to since midday, you've got an ice-cold glass mm -hmm. to pour it into. And that's wonderful. Little, Little things like Finding that. 20 quid in your wallet you never knew you had. Oh, baby. Yes. And a pair of trousers. You went to a yeah. wedding, right, and you never normally wear that suit. And a year later you get it out and there's a tenner. <laughs> oh, you just... Because uh, the number of times you haven't got a tenner and you look through your old trousers just and in you case. Never you never it. find one. But no, my look, though, I find the tenner and then realise they've actually replaced it with a new <laughs> note and I can't use it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you for that, Scouse, Jay. I always did prefer you to Timmy Mallet, Scouse. Says. <laughs> Our phone number, give us a call. 01243 556060. We're not really on anything hot tonight, although I am quite keen on the idea of hearing thoughts on, seriously, starting a political party. Mm -hmm. Build a website, and when we get 100 members, start to talk about policy things, interesting policy things. I mean, would you change the law of the age of consent, Matt, for example? Um, I think that's a tricky one, and I think that's a debate that goes hand in hand with sex education. Okay. Um, and, you know, how, how do we make our, the youth of today more aware of sexual diseases, of mm. pregnancy and stuff, but without limiting the, their mm. sexual activity, because I don't think anybody should, and I think wise. your body tells you when you're old enough to have sex. Very wise. Well said, doesn't it? When was your first time you had any kind of a sexual experience? Um, probably? 14. It was all quite late for me. That is quite late. Yeah, but I... Did you not have funny dreams? Um, Occasional well, I, I couldn't... No. Trouser twitch? No. no well, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, was, yeah. I, was, I was a human. I was a young boy as yeah. well, but um, I was bullied for quite a few years, so I never really felt part of um, a promiscuous... What would you like to do to the bully now? Would you like to whack him? Would you like to get him? Have you ever plotted revenge? What would be the point in me popping down to one of the local prisons, opening oh, okay. a cell door and whacking Is he in there the guy now? when I'm sat here in a studio okay. with Tommy Boyd and James Well and right. having the time of my life? Oh, okay. Absolutely fine. Yeah, good. But there was good a few answer. of them, but they're all doing appalling in comparison to me. Good. That's the revenge. Mm -hmm. Success is the only revenge. And by success, I don't necessarily mean being a millionaire. No. Uh, I mean being Happiness, happy. Happiness, yes. Happiness. And guess who's on Skype? 
Okay. Hi, oh, Tommy! That would be Alan. Hi, oh, Tommy! Hi, Matt! Hello. Yay! Oh, I've got on watch away. Great change. Remember, Tommy, he's got this high court case tomorrow, saying whether he could go or whether he can't go. Oh, dear. with Matt on Sunday. He's done his time, so he's simply not allowed to go to the Olympics. Okay, thank you for that very much indeed, Alan. We'll piece that together in post-production. I, well, I you... would suggest that Alan calls back on the phone line because his Skype line was dodgy. Okay, he was it was breaking up there. Yes. Um, just to jump ahead, the e emails one that's just come in a couple of seconds ago. I've just skyped you, and I must say you don't look bad for your age. I haven't seen you for years, and I was expecting to see you with no hair and looking your age. You don't look bad at all. That's Alison. <laughs> from Berkshire. Thank you. Alison. Very much. Yeah, if you go... So, you can look at the webcam on Skype? No. No. No, you look at the she webcam got that on nttbs.com and click watch. Okay. So, she, you can either watch the webcam at playradiouk.com slash webcam, which updates every five seconds, but if oh, you've got rubbish. decent broadband, you want to watch yeah. it because it's synced with audio, just like the telly at nttbs.com and click watch. Email from Andrew. Uh, Mr. Boy, good to hear your vocals on my Wi-Fi radio. I have a question, really, and was just wanting to know your opinion. At the age, is it too old to return to education? I only ask, as in a couple of years I'm thinking of returning to study something part-time in the hope of going into some sort of a new career. Also, what is the best advice you have ever given anybody? I don't give advice, I don't don't often no. give advice. It's, it's um, always difficult giving advice, isn't it? Because then there's somebody to blame when it all goes wrong. There's that, yeah. But I, I enjoy making sure that people know they've always got options, and mm. maybe it's that. And it's never too late to go back into education, isn't it? No. Well, to a nice saying, I don't know if it's Chinese, it's never too late to become the person that you want to be. Yeah. Websites don't always work to their full potential. In fact, they can seem like a mystic art. Wouldn't it be great if you had someone on hand to wave a magic wand that would optimize, improve, and increase traffic to your website? Fear no more. The Web Wizard is here dispensing web wisdom and free tips. Email your question to Jason Rutland, the Play 2 Web Wizard, wizard at playradiouk.com. Then listen at 2.30pm on the last Thursday of every month. The Web Wizard on Play 2 with Argo Internet Business Consultants. Growing your ideas. Click argo.uk.com. Are everyday items stretching your family income to the limits at the moment? Me too. Well, I found this amazing website, comparison-plus.co.uk. It's amazing. You can compare the prices of thousands of products from all the big retailers. And what's more, it's a totally free service. You don't have to become a member to use Comparison Plus. But if you do register with comparison-plus.co.uk, you get cashback rewards, giving you even bigger savings. Don't pay over the odds. Click comparison-plus.co.uk and start saving now. Broadcasting live to the UK. Entertainment and the best music from the past 40 years. This is Play 2 UK. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Taboo subjects will be discussed and opinions aired. If you're easily offended by an open minded nature of mass debate, then this show is not for you. It's five past nine in the United Kingdom. It's whatever the time is where you are. Let's take a call. Hello there. Hello, could I speak to Tommy Boyd, please? You're on, it's me. Hello. 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 Um, hi, um, my mum phoned you about a quarter of an hour ago. That's um, right. Linda Barber. Yeah. And you're Laura? I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what it was this, was, um, your mum was saying, like, oh, she was saying, I'm 50, I'm too old to be getting into a PC or anything. But she said she liked to. Yeah. So I thought I'd just have a quick word with you. Just to see whether there was any way you could help her get herself a little laptop or something. I know they're not expensive. I know they're, you know, not cheap, but... No, well, not really. No, I'm not, not really. um... Yeah. Just <laughs> a rich person, really, but... No, I know, and they are... 
you know, a radio, you can get a nice radio for nine ninety nine, can't you? Yeah. And a, and a PC. I don't know if you can get second-hand ones for dirt cheap. I well, don't know. I mean, even if I got one, to be honest, when my mum says that she's not right good, she doesn't even know how to turn them on. No, OK, <laughs> it's all right. Text. Well, I was only trying to help. I know. Yeah. You know I think what it was, because um, she's been bugging me about trying to find James Whale. Yeah. And I had a look, and I says, well, he's got a website kind of thing, and, um, you know, I says, he's sort of on radio and that, and uh, on internet, sorry, and she's like, oh, well, we really miss him and all. Yeah, I know. I know. So, um, I know. It's, it's the thing about radio is you do you do end up sometimes regarding certain shows as being a kind of a friend or almost a member of the family. I did. Yeah. Before I got involved in it, because um, yeah. it's different when you're involved in it, you know. Uh, and then that show goes, and you really feel as though there's been a bereavement almost. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Is that? I mean, um, like I've said to her before, like I'll set internet up at her house and. Um, sort of bring my laptop down and so that she can listen, <laughs> listen well, to it on a night. And give that. it a go, yeah, I mean, how far from your mum's do you live? Well, she lives in Austin, I live in Wakefield, so it's about 20 minutes on bus, something like oh, that. It's a bit of a schlep though, isn't it, every yeah. night? Yeah. Well, I do, I do tend to uh, sleep over once a week. Well, there you are then. Take, have you got a laptop? I have, yeah. Well, take your laptop over next time and just show her how it works and then say to her, look, it's going to cost you, I think, what's the cheapest you can get a laptop for, Matt? Hmm. You can get one free with your broadband connection these days. I saw that. Are they any yeah. good? I don't know. Acer laptops, A-C-E-R, they're sort of the basic bog standard ones they give yeah. away. You probably pick one up for 140 quid. They keep coming down, don't they, Laura? You know that. But yeah, still, do, yeah. there's a big difference between 150 quid and 9.99 for a radio. And yeah. But, but you know, <laughs> your mum's only young and she's got a lot, a long way to go, so she'll have to end up on the internet at some point, because that's where all of us are going to end up, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's the new uh, age of radio now, isn't it? Well, listen, well done for calling. That's kind of you. Love to your mum, and, um, and stay in touch. Will do, yeah. I'll definitely get it set up so she can listen to your, uh... uh what, what sort of days does, um, James Whale come on, then, on, on internet? Um, he's every Monday and Tuesday from 8 until midnight on Play 2 UK, which is part of the PlayRadioUK.com network. Right, okay, that's great, is that? Okay, then I'll, I'll definitely pass message on anyway. No, no, listen, not... listen, if you if you want any help, technically or anything, or okay. or if you want to ask James a question or anything, all you need to do during the week is email james.whale at playradiouk.com. I'll pick up the email, I'll help you as much as I can. Oh, that's brilliant, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. See you, yeah. darling, thanks for, thanks. Thanks, thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, wondering about starting a political party, mm. and I've got an email on it from... Dunk sellotape, suggesting all members of the party not paid. Okay. Members voluntary. I don't know how that would work because I would, if it was running well, my country, I'd rather pay someone and know they're doing a good job than have them do it for free. Although well, you'd be running the country because job. you'd be telling people, we'd be telling people, the members of the party would vote on all the policies and the uh, elected people who would go to parliament and they would be elected. Because what you do, start a political party. Put up some candidates. If any of them get elected, then they go to Parliament and they're paid the sixty-eight, whatever it is, thousand pounds a year that MPs get paid. Okay, and that's fair enough, isn't it? Yes. But I think what Dunk means is that all the officers and members of the party are unpaid. So there's no no tarnishment of money. But that's the bad thing about this country: is if you're not going to pay some someone to do a job, most of the time, unless it's charity work, they won't do it. I think to start the party off, it should be cash free. It should be free of cash. And then maybe further down the road, if there's a general election to be fought and the party puts up a candidate, then we'll need some cash there because, as you know, you have to put up a deposit if you're going to stand for Parliament. Yes. And the way we would get noticed as a political party, you only have to have two candidates in order to call yourself a political party. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if we had two candidates and we were motoring on the internet, developing policy by people joining the party and then joining in the various debates mm -hmm. and then voting on the policies, you know, capital punishment, yes or no, would be an e easy one yeah. and it would probably have to be had, that debate. Fox hunting, yes or no, easy one, but that would have to be had. And then you get into some more complex things like whether we should continue. Well, let me c finish reading Duncan's suggestions. He's got four or five quick ones. Leave the EU if elected. So there it's clearly Duncan is strongly opposed to UK membership of the EU, which I gather you are, Matt. 
Um, not opposed, but I don't think someone in Brussels should be telling people what, in London what to do. But are they, though? Well, I think... I th are they? An easy one, isn't it? Yeah. The MEPs are on a gravy train, taking a luxury five-star train that nobody else is allowed to go on and go off to Brussels and earn £172,000 a year and not actually do anything except move around large amounts of money and uh, be involved in the bureaucracy. Is that really the case? Well, I don't know. Some, some might say quite it's an easy tabloid that one, Hitler predicted it. Predicted what? The whole running Europe from Brussels and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's all to do with conspiracy theories in the book after Mein Kampf, which he wrote, A New World Order Never Being Found and all that kind of stuff. Oh, tosh, that is. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Reduce, this is Duncan, reduce the number of channels and BBC budget so that the TV licence will be reduced. With the saving of 200 billion of pounds of leaving the EU, we could reduce taxes, make all money loans from the government so that we would have no interest loans as the government can create fresh money like banks can. OK, so Duncan's got the ball rolling. Here's one I'd like to suggest. I would like to bring car insurance, OK, into the government. I would like the government to be the body that issues car insurance so that you're not fighting around trying to get the best quote and you're not worried about whether your insurance is actually going to cover you when anything happens. They do it in Australia, and it works. Isn't it in Australia, though, you insure yourself and not your car, so you can drive any car, yeah. you're just insuring yourself, yeah. and I think that's a much better way of working. That's right, yep, yep, so that's worth looking at. Thank you, Dunk. Uh, Dunk has just been listening to me reading out Dunk's email. I assume Dunk's a he, but I won't say he, just in case not. Uh, Dunk says, MPs didn't used to get paid. Also, check out and there's a website to check out, which I won't do, Dunk, because I, I know everything, so I don't need to check things out. Oh, oh. And, um, MPs didn't used to be paid? How far back are we going there, Dunk? No. How far back are you going there, Dunk? Huh? 1784? <laughs> Didn't really count, does it? But thank you, Dunk. You got the ball rolling. A couple of policy ideas there. Uh, Peter emails... Oh, yes, that's another email regarding my hair. It's interesting. Got um, a Skype call coming through. Okay, I'll take that answer, shot. If you answer, click answer. I'll oh, click answer there. Thank you very much indeed. Um, is it Oscar? Are you there, Oscar? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, T Tommy. Hey, Oscar. Hello. Hello. Um, right about the the um, the subject of a political party. I have for some time thought that it would be a good idea to have another political party because obviously n neither of the two big ones has delivered, has it? They keep trying one and then after a few years they flop so they try the other and that one flops again and it just keeps going around and around. We do need something new, definitely. Okay. Um, so I want to suggest a name, really, because I, I guess that's a good place to start. Hmm. And, uh, well, you obviously can take it on board or, or not, but it's just a nomination for a name. And um, it kind of encompasses the ethos of what I think would be a good basis for the mentality of what the political party should be about. And I think we should call it the FIT party. Okay. Spell that. F-I-T. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'd have gone there too. <laughs> okay. All right. What does it stand because, for? Um, Apart from sort of saying, well, it's a party that's fit to govern. Yes, fit for purpose. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, of course, we're all fit people. Yes. As in the sort of, you know, very attractive and alluring. Yeah. Um, FIT could stand for free individuals together, or freedom, individuality, and togetherness, if you wanted to put it that way. Or freedom through IT. Uh, okay, there's if, another angle on it. If we're going to use the internet as a means of exchanging ideas about policy and then voting on policy, then IT... Does IT stand for internet technology, Matt? Uh, yeah, information technology. Information technology. Okay, then information te technology is going to be central to the whole thing, so I like it. I like it. Fit party. Okay. Well, that's one idea. Other, other people may have other suggestions, but I thought that really uh, the society that we live in, in a way, that, that is a nice way of kind of encapsulating how politics should handle the, the process of governing a nation. It says, first of all, we are free people, or free individuals, allowed our individuality and freedom, mm. but in third place of the three letters, as it were, when necessary, we come together and operate collectively as the state, 
mm. um, and and do the things where it involves us kind of working it in a in a spirit of cooperation. Okay. But that's that's the third place. So the freedom kind of comes first, uh, but the togetherness working is in there as as an essential part of it. Good. So good. I thought it was a, a reasonable idea. If if we're going to use this to discover whether we can make this work, then I guess, although it, it's only a small thing, voting for the name of the party would be something that we could try and do once we get up to, let's say, and this is quite arbitrary, I don't know why I'm saying 100, but if we can build 100 members, we need to get a little website, but if we can get 100 members, the first thing to discuss is what the past is called. Of course, you know what's going to happen, then you're going to get schisms, mm -hmm. splinter groups. Yeah. There'll be breakaway. <laughs> There'll be a breakaway organisation. <laughs> Some members of the party resigning in a huff. Other members refusing to talk to other members. It's a shame, but I guess if we're going to be an authentic political party, uh, we have to get used to that kind of skirmishing. Well, I guess so. If you've got that, that kind of spirit of freedom where people are allowed to to branch off and have their own individuality then you will get that mm. where people say yes we, we need to sort of reformulate it to some extent and present it as something slightly different and, and as you say we get a breakaway group but something else that occurred to me over the last few days about this uh, a few days ago we had that David Davis by-election funny you should mention him he was just in my mind when you changed the subject but you go right. first go on David well, Davis. The thing that the thing that struck me about that, I was listening to the radio at the night when when the thing was announced, and there was a guy ca came on the radio. I was listening to LBC actually, and um, that John Looney bloke, who's a, a, a guy who does monster raving Looney stuff, mm -hmm. and he's a regular caller, came on and he had a list of all the candidates. I think there were about twenty six candidates or something, even though. Mm. Uh, Labour and the Liberal Democrats didn't refuse, they refused I think to stand in the election completely uh, but 26 candidates and and some uh, interesting ones amongst them obviously there was a monster raving loony candidate and one or two other very sort of fringy uh, people there but it, it really did disappoint me that out of all those candidates that there was no one that any significant numbers of people in that area were prepared to take a serious look at and embrace. Mm. Now, I can understand, obviously, you know, you've got there were a, a, a right-wing uh, National Front guy and all that. You don't expect those people to gain huge amounts of votes, but you would have thought that in amongst all those people mm. that put themselves up for that election, that there would have been someone there with some serious alternatives mm. to to deserve some higher numbers of votes than they got because obviously David Davis got re-elected with a, a, a huge majority of the votes yeah, cast. 15,000 wasn't it? Yeah, yeah and, and, and I think the next one was the Greens or something. Another, another interesting uh, thing about that by-election Oscar is that the papers reported there being um, what they called a very healthy turnout and that was 34 percent and it's come to this now that there's so little interest in the system that we have and the parties and the personalities that we have that when a third of the population vote and two thirds can't be asked that is considered a healthy turnout now if we were to develop a, p a political party which offered access to everybody and a sense of ownership to everybody because everybody who's in the party can vote on all the policies that we put together okay and that if if that proposition were to build a membership, a substantial membership, and you're looking at thousands and then maybe you know, a six-figure number, maybe even a seven-figure number, then people are going to be able to get involved in politics at home, at their PC, instead of having to do what I think a lot of people find a pain in the arse, which is trudge around to a polling station and go through all that kind of nonsense where you have to produce a piece of paper which shows who you are. They then give you a ballot slip with a number on it, which means that there is a record of how you voted. Are we all fully aware that all those things... Did you know that, Matt? Mm. That you're, the how you vote can be traced? Mm -hmm. You did know that. Didn't they try some more automated service in America and they blamed that for Bush getting in so many votes, didn't they? The automated vote machines, they said that they were rigged. Punch card things, yeah. And I think the internet would be such a hard way of actually making sure that it was secure and accurate that mm. I don't think, as nice as it would be, it could ever really truly be possible. 
do you not think that we could make voting compulsory, as in over the age of 18, unless, you know, like jury service, unless you have a very good reason, you have to vote. But there's okay. a box in there that right. says no vote. Okay. So you can tick the no vote, but you have to turn up and make a decision. All right, let's ask Oscar. Uh, compulsory voting, I'm essentially against it because I think it, it goes against the basic freedom concept. Unless, of course, you, if you're going to force people to come to the ballot box and cast a vote, then perhaps they should have the option to vote against as well as for. So maybe you could, I mean, people sometimes speak about having a none of the above box that people can tick, and perhaps that would effectively count as a vote against all of the members, if, if all of the, uh, the candidates. So that um, if you get uh, if you if you get more votes cast against you, that would sort of forbid you, even if you perhaps got a majority of the votes cast in favour of you, that they would be cancelled out by the ones against you. Maybe you could even have a for and against besides each of the candidates, so that you can put a tick or a cross or a, a tick in the for or a tick in the against. Right. Uh, and again, that would mean that you can say, look, if we're going to be forced to go to the ballot box, we can say, I don't want this person. And but, if you're going to allow majority rule to take effect, then obviously enough people saying this person, we forbid this person from being elected, that that would also prevent that person from being elected. Doesn't that sort of reverse the polarity of the vote, though? So then, like, let's say more people were going to vote positive for Conservative than were Labour. So instead, uh, all the people that are voting positive for Conservative will now vote against Labour and vice versa. So the Conservatives will end up getting in anyway because they've got less non-positive votes than the others. Mm, could be. I mean, I think you'd, you need to kind of think it through, but uh, the idea of in introducing the compulsoriness to the vote doesn't in itself strike me as, as a right sort of idea from from the point of view of, of democracy. I have really. to say, Oscar, I'm, yeah. um, I'm convinced just by your call alone that this is something that we should really think about taking forward. It's not going to happen o overnight, but you, you would be interested in being an unpaid, uncharged member of the party and we'd have a little play with policy formation and mechanisms for creating policy and debate. I take it that's yes, the yes. I think so. I think Good. it's nice just to start it from, you know, a journey of a thousand miles beginning with the first step. Let's start something and see where it goes. Yeah. Um, the, the principles that I've mentioned I think are a good basis along with things perhaps like when you look at these, the, the, the fringe parties that do come and offer themselves as alternatives, but they seem sort of to be too kind of wacky. Mm. Um, one of the fundamental things we need to be saying is that we're going to be conventional where we need to be conventional mm. and radical where we need to be radical, where we mm. apply intelligence to that to decide where we are going to have to come up with some very different ideas from what's been offered for, for generations now. But of course we can't appear to be another one of these weird and wacky raving loony parties no. or Rainbow George from Hampstead with his... his uh, weird ideas no. that he's been sort of putting forward for, for, for you, years and never gets more right, than a handful of votes. People vote with their wallets, don't they? So one of the first things we'd have to show is that we could be, you know, <coughs> trusted with the economy and things. Thank you, Oscar. Very okay. much indeed for your call. And although it won't interest you in the slightest, because I don't suppose you're able to see what's going on here, or do you have access to the web cameras? Um, I haven't got the webcam switched on. I, could, I can switch it on if need be, but normally I just... Uh, mm. Listen uh, uh, with the with Winamp on a okay. low bandwidth. Uh, because for some, some reason, I found myself doing a doodle of you whilst I'm listening to your voice. Oh, right. I'm, really? I'm really not sure how accurate or otherwise. I'd have is. to sort of. Oh, well, yes. I don't know. Wait, you le leave that with me. I'll take a photo and email it to him. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a good. Idea. You haven't sort of portrayed me as a vicar or something, have you? Do you wear glasses, Oscar? Uh, for reading, yes. For reading, okay. Are they round? Well, I've got various ones. Not no, um, I've got some oval ones and some other shaped ones. I don't Shall know how you describe the shape. I think of them if you there. were, if you were to, if I were to characterise the doodle I've done of you, you look like a young Trotsky. All right. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> well, it'll do. It'll do. Good um, talking to you. Yorkshireman says it'll do. It'll do, it'll do, that's all right. All right, good talking to you, friend. Thank you. Talk to you again, I hope. Yeah, OK, cheers for that. See you. Bye. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye. That was interesting. Mm. Um, I'm completely lost now because I got so immersed in uh, what we, what's going on this evening. It's Play Radio. It's uh, Matt and Tommy in for James Whale. The usual ways you can contact us would be great. If you're listening around the world and we occasionally refer to, say, David Davis and you don't know what the F we're talking about... Um, 
rather than explain, I'll just kind of move swiftly on because you can probably get the gist. Uh, what I'm, I'm completely lost now, I've got a news jingle in front of me. Matt, have I missed something here uh, at 35 past nine in the UK? You just need to hit the news jingle and read out a bit of weather. Oh, okay. Later UK. Headlines. The oldest son of the Back from the Dead canoeist says his world was crushed when he was told of his father's death. Mark Darwin and his brother Anthony have been giving evidence against their mother, Anne. She denies all charges against her. A suspect in the Madeleine McCann case has settled a libel bid over newspaper claims he was involved in her disappearance. A number of British papers are thought to have agreed to pay Robert Murat a total of half a million pounds. Soaring bills for petrol and food are being blamed for rocketing in Inflation. The latest figures show it's shot up to 3.8%. And British Airways is warning passengers will have to deal with higher fares and fewer flights. Chief Executive Willie Walsh says price rises are absolutely inevitable because of the economic climate. Place in UK. Weather. This evening tonight, light rain continuing southwest, southeastwards overnight, perhaps turning moderate as it clears Kent later. The rest of the UK will see clear spells developing with rain or showers in the northwest. Wednesday, dry and sunny in the south and near the east coast, but turning cloudy later. Elsewhere, cloud and rain will gradually spread <laughs> eastwards to affect the rest of the UK. You're up to date on Play 2 UK. Now, there's. Imagine what it's like waiting. Oh, okay, I will. Just waiting. Waiting with your life on hold. Waiting for an organ transplant. This year, around a thousand people in the UK could die waiting. Simply because there aren't enough donors. More of us need to join the NHS Organ Donor Register, so please, don't wait. Join the register now. Call 0845 60 60 400 or visit uktransplant.org.uk. And he went. Don't tell me what to do, you're a racist. And I went, I'm not telling you what to do, his name. I said, I'm asking you to move your arm so she can mop up the, the drink. Meanwhile, the guy sitting next to me has started on him and said, look, you know what, you can't start branding the, the term being a racist around because it's far too easy to call someone a racist just because it's something that comes out of your mouth. But in this day and age, that term sticks. Even if it's not true. Mm. Not the Tommy Boyd Show with Matt and Stu. Sundays from 7 pm UK time, only on Play Radio UK. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Oh, I see what NTTBS stands for ah, now. I did not realise. That's where you go if you want to watch what's going on here. NTTBS.com, which stands for Not the Tommy Boyd. Sundays uh, from 7 on Play 2 UK. Sundays from 7. Um, a suggestive email from Lisa Jameson. So suggestive? That's downright rude. <laughs> Please tell the gnome who is presenting to do a full Monty striptease on the web cameras. I want to see if the carpet matches the curtains. I also want to know if he has ever been... Filated. ...by a listener. I'll only swallow if he doesn't smoke. It's from Lisa and Three Kisses. Mind you, we're men of the world, aren't we? Have you noticed how Lisas are always, usually, pretty game for a laugh? <laughs> I'm seeing a Lisa at the minute. Alaska. Are you there? You are. You see? <laughs> just because I'm seeing her, she's automatically game for a laugh. Well, so I assume she is. Um, you know, just good fun. I mean, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, mean you know, yeah. sleeping around or anything. I just mean good fun. And Alisons are always quite angelic. Mm. There's something innocent I'll agree with, about Alisons, I'll agree with generally yeah, speaking. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And I like Alisons. I've always found Alisons yeah. attractive. And Lisas. Uh -huh. Attractive. So, who are we going out with before Lisa? Um, I, I, well, oh, I complicated. Know, do you really it? want to get into? As a girl, seeing a girl over Christmas called Jamie. Jamie. Yes. And before that? Um, single. Single. Yeah. And before that? Oh, let's not go there. Oh, all right. Okay. Fine. I've just been nosy. You can like nosy. It's going too far back. Now. Okay, mate. That's fine. It's play radio. Obviously, you know that. Don't need to uh, position all the time. But it's habit. Chris Allen has emailed. I remember listening to you a few years ago the best advice you gave a listener was this you're going to die it's <laughs> great advice it is it is so people you do are. think we're going to live forever uh, and they can therefore they can leave whatever they really need to do until tomorrow or yeah. next week or next year yeah that's just a crass way Sunday to Sunday drivers it's the same principle 
What do you mean? They think they've got all the time in the world. Yes. It's a good song, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. I we love have that. all, all the, time the time in the world. It's where, um, she gets shot, Draco. The George Lazenby James Bond, isn't it? Mm. She gets shot. They think they have all the time in the world. And they get married, and he gets out of the car to stretch his legs, have a quick fag. And that car comes past and shoots her. Mm -hmm. Down a rig. What have we got? I've just added somebody to our Skype chat. Okay, that's good. It's called Stephen, so hello Stephen James. Stephen James is on board. He certainly is. We're shooting the breeze this day, but we're also wondering about starting some kind of a political party which enables people to form policy and have votes and feel as though they're really in control of what would become, hopefully, a proper political manifesto. And you probably think I'm arsing around here, but I'm vaguely serious. Because I've always been vaguely tempted by politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are think, you vaguely? I think, well, I, I think we're all vaguely tempted by vaguely. being able to make better decisions than yeah. some of the people that are there already. Hard though, because often there's nothing to be done about some things. Take knife crime. There's nothing to be done. Well, I tell you what, nothing right? To be done. We we touched on this briefly last Sunday night, and uh, the um, Brooke Kinsella, uh, the tragic story of her younger brother. Brooke Kinsella used to act on EastEnders, and her bro younger brother. Um, I can't remember his name, um, fortunately, was stabbed um, a week, two weeks ago. He's the latest sort of high-profile case, I believe. Um, but it would seem that everybody's concentrating on the fact that this guy got stabbed in a bar. No one's concentrating on the fact that he's 16 and he shouldn't have been in the bar. Well, there's that. So, um, and it, you know, if, if you had a policeman on every corner, it's an old saying, but it goes, doesn't it? I mean, people used to leave their front doors open. They'd see the bobby biking through, say hello, have a oh, chat. Bollocks. Give me a clip round You the must end. be I, joking. I, I, when I was young, it was like that. Yeah, you, you don't, you, when you were young, you didn't have the powers of perception to know what the hell was going on. True. God. Someone of your age to be hearkening after the good old days is sick. I know, I wasn't calling Do you have any idea days? how much better it is to live now than it was 20 years ago? Or 50 years ago? Yes, of course. A hundred years that's, ago. That's not what his question, is it? I mean, you, you go back 50 years, there, there was, was a... far more crime in the past. It just didn't get reported. There was a visible presence of police, though, which no, you don't get now. Yeah, well, no, there wasn't. A lot more than there was. I used to remember, when I was a kid, right, we'd walk through the village, we'd see the bobby at least once, if not twice, a day, right? After the age of 14, 15, 16, didn't see anyone, unless they were there to chuck young kids off the park who were... So what did you not do, then, do? that you would have done if it hadn't been for this fat old bobby perambulating around on his rusty rally? What would you have done if he hadn't been there? Would you have well, knifed I'd, each other to I'd, death? No, certainly no. not. Would you have done any crime at all? Um, no. Well, if he was around. If he'd not have been around. If not have been around. What did he stop you doing then? Is, well, he, is I... he the reason you're not in Pentonville? <laughs> and he what good well, did he do? He could well be. What did he, you needed him in your school where you were being bullied. True. But then that would have just made the situation worse. It wouldn't. They have coppers in American colleges and universities. It works rather well. I think you're bringing them in here. But well, we're drifting off the point, um, when I can't remember what the point was. Knife crime. There's nothing to be done. No. There's nothing to be done, unless you want to be really clever about it, and what I'd do is make it, is make the carrying of a knife something that is, per is perceived as being something that a cowardly wanker does. Okay, as opposed to it being something that a real cool dude... Yeah. ...who finishes every sentence with the word in it. So you want to rebrand knife crime? Yeah. I, I want to say, you've got a knife, you wanker. Toss her. Mm. Be a man. Come back when you can use your fists. Just, yeah, be a man. You don't need a knife. Anybody who needs a knife, toss her. And, and, and believe me, if that became, if we, if, we, if we attempted to get that idea out and we could, were able to do it successfully, then that would reduce the, mm. the amount of knives that people mm. carry in, so that they become ashamed of carrying their knife. Instead of what happens now is you see you're in a gang, you know, and there's six of you, and you wear your hoodies, and you hang around, and one of you gets a knife, and then he's automatically the big kid in, kid in the gang, he's got a knife. So the other kids think, oh, I better get a knife as well, otherwise they'll call me a tosser. So they get the knife. And what they do is they borrow the potato knife from the kitchen, mm -hmm. when mum's not watching. And they know, if they get it back before breakfast, she won't notice it was there. So out they go, they've got their potato knife, they go, oh, look, I've got a knife. Oh, you're all right, you're a lad now. Mm. It's a fashion thing. If we made spoons sexier, Oh, I don't know. If we made the spoon... If a spoon could win you a gangland fight, then yes. why not? Yes. Here's a spoon, see you yeah. can eat this ice cream first. Yeah, I was saying to somebody the other day, you know, if they rewrote popular culture so that that song was not Mac the Knife, but Mac the Spoon. <laughs> and if that 
bit in Crocodile Dundee went, oh, uh, give him your wallet, Mick, he's got a spoon. <laughs> it's not but, a spoon. And Mick pulls out a ladle. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, that's not a spoon. <laughs> that's a spoon. Then, I don't know, that might work. But how many times in that film did he use the knife? I think I, I didn't actually... No. Off the top of my head, I don't think no, he ever he used it. Really. He pulled out and said, that's not a knife, this yeah. is a knife. But his main weapon was a can of beans on some guy's head across a tube station. Yeah. You see. So what would we do then if we were politicians? You're a politician now, what would you do about knife crime? They're constantly asking you, the press are always going, you know, what are you going to do about knife crime? What are you going to do about knife crime? What can you do about knife crime? <sighs> Compulsory sentence, metal detectors in that's schools, but then it's just my well, big brother, isn't it? Different says, you know. I feel that Dwayne Chambers comes in an email from Alan, should be banned from going to Beijing with the British team because he was right to be banned for taking drugs and going to the High Court to overtake it would make it okay for cheats to think that they have a backdoor entry to the games. No, it wouldn't. It would say to a lot of people that it doesn't matter if you've done wrong once, you can be forgiven and you can be a better person. Yeah, I agree. But I would also have two sets of Olympic Games. Yes. Clean Games. And a dirty game. Yes, I'm with you completely on that. And I think if anybody wants to stuff their body full of steroids or... What's the one they're using at the moment? It's male hormone... Um, uh, growth hormone, isn't yes. it? Male growth hormone. If they want to stuff themselves full of male growth hormone, go ahead. I don't care. It doesn't turn them into, you know, muggers or compulsive gamblers, as in the case of Fat Steve in America, whose wife, an attorney, is working on a court case... I've got to look into that. Mm. If you weren't listening earlier, we took a call from a uh, charming guy in Atlanta whose wife is an attorney and away for three weeks. She's working on a case in court where a firm is being sued for a drug that they make to help combat the effects of Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonism, but which unfortunately has the side effect of leading to compulsive gambling. Hi, Tommy! Alan, you're talking crap. What do you mean? About Dwayne Chambers. Well, I really do. What do you mean? You're talking crap about D Dwayne Chambers being. Well, so is Matt on Sunday night. Banned for life. But, yeah, but what well, he is at the moment. And I don't think he would win his appeal at the High Court tomorrow. If he's fast no. enough, he's good enough. No, a ban is still a ban, and the BOA, all because of a silly little bylaw, that's why he's banned for life. Because of a stupid little bylaw. He's not banned for life. He's well, the BOA think he is. It's complicated British athletics, and I know that Alan doesn't understand it, but I do, because I know everything. You have the Amateur Athletics Association, and you have the British Olympic Federation, and they're two effectively separate bodies. And in order to run at the Olympics, you have to have the blessing of the Olympic Federation. And they've decided that he should be banned from running in the Olympics for Britain for life. Even though the international athletics associations have said that after serving a ban, he for drugs. Is, is free to... yeah. He should be allowed to run. What's that's what the IAAF said. But the Olympics are saying, and no, that's why Dwayne Chambers is at the High Court tomorrow to overturn the ban. Yeah, I know. Let him run, Alan. What's your problem? Let him run. That's no, what he does. I mean, what about Costas Kendrick? He was banned from competing in Athens, and now he gets to be competing for Greece in this year's games. Let them run. Oh, anyway, your favourite team are doing well again. Change the subject, you can bugger off. Alan Caddick there, unable to really sustain much of an argument, but his enthusiasm <laughs> made up for his absence yes, of virtual absence not. of any connective logic, I thought. But thank you very much, Alan. Can we check the Skype line to see if Eduardo's still on there? I oh, jeez. Are you there, Eduardo? I am here indeed. Sorry about that, Test mate. We missed testing. you. Testing. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Right. Hello, now you're talking my language, Mr. Boyd. You're talking my now language, you Reggie. A button with me about this political party, and I will tell you why. I would like to here and now put myself up for as leadership of this party. I have a number of reasons. Would you like to hear them? Well, I don't know if we should have an estate agent in charge of the party. Never mind about that. That then, if I'm going to be the leader of the party, I'm going to be the full-time leader of the party. Now, all you, get, to do, all you get to yes. do as an estate agent is point out where the powerpoints are. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Now, 
Yes, leave the room. PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Bathroom. <laughs> yes, central. It's not one of many reasons. One being that I am just over six foot, so I'm neither too tall nor too short. Yes, okay. I am. Oh, bad Skype line. Uh, um, Eduardo. Friendly, and I will appeal to the younger people, and I will. Don't interrupt, I'm, I'm eulogising, and I will appeal to the older people. Okay. I am intelligent, but not intelligent enough to make the policies, but intelligent enough to stand behind them and believe them. Yes. That, I think, is a very good trait of a leader. I wouldn't get confused. You'd be a puppet. Absolutely. I'm happy to be the puppet as long as I'm in charge. Okay. Or you. So, here and now, I'd, yes. I'd like to be made leader. All right. Well, you can certainly join the party. We've got you, Oscar, and somebody masquerading as the name Dunk. Is that Dunk but tape? I want to be the leader. Dunk tape. I know you want to be the leader, but there'll have to be some sort of process. As they call well, it always, process. <laughs> process. Due process? Due process, They yes. call it due process. Yeah, we're not, look, we're not necessarily looking for a leader yet. We're hoping to be leaderless, rather like the Conservatives. No, but it needs, how can you have a leaderless party? Um, because you don't need a leader if everybody is oh, making the policies. You see? You have been trying to force this anarchy nonsense down our necks for almost ten years now. Much longer than that. You need a leader, a Huge Mr. believer in... And you need someone who's... Anarchy. You know, Anarchy is a state Gen where we don't need laws or good leaders looking. or... Good looking. I'm sure you're good looking. Um, has weight in proportion. Yeah, oh, you Think shit. of me as an intelligent flight steward. A trolley dolly. Yes, but with a certain charisma. And uh, hopefully at least one Y chromosome. <laughs> yeah, it's all plenty of those. Okay. I'm not sure what you mean, but I think you mean that I'm not uh, not, not as like gay Gertie. as most trolley dollies. Yes. All right, Eduardo. Thank you very much indeed for that. So is that is that Eduardo Paris? Yes, certainly was. Excellent to hear from Eduardo. Thank you for that Skype line. Less than 100 percent perfect, but nevertheless got a number of quite good emails coming in, well, and and to... Matt has gone straight to the photograph. Of the which we've been lady. sent of a topless lady who is, happens to be called Lisa. This is the li this is the Lisa that emailed earlier and says this is her, the one that you know would f fillet and this is her. Well, do we put that now for people to see? I suppose we have. To. Hang on, hang on. This is a topless ish. Okay. Well, I hope that is Lisa, because otherwise, you know, somebody's <laughs> mum is going to be very pissed off with us. If you want to increase your profits, go the extra mile for your customers, and bring loyalty to your business, then you need Play in Store. In house or online, Play in Store is your personal made to measure music and marketing tool. As part of the Play Radio Network, we are experts at creating the perfect radio station for your customers. In turn, delivering an increase in sales, staff morale, and brand awareness. Go to playinstore.co.uk. Are everyday items stretching your family income to the limits at the moment? Me too. Well, I found this amazing website, comparison-plus.co.uk. It's amazing. You can compare the prices of thousands of products from all the big retailers. And what's more, it's a totally free service. You don't have to become a member to use Comparison Plus. But if you do register with comparison-plus.co.uk, you get cashback rewards, giving you even bigger savings. Don't pay over the odds. Click comparison-plus.co.uk and start saving now. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. And we'll take a call. Thank you for ringing. Who's this? Uh, hello, Tommy. This is Patrick O'Donoghue here, so it is. How, how are you? Good evening. Top of the evening to you. Um, same back at you, sir. I uh, just wanted to make a call about uh, politics, because you brought up the uh, the question of politics, and uh, there's something that I've always wanted to to have achieved by politics in this country. Okay. And, and that is to, uh, to ban secret societies. Say so again? That they... Hello? Yeah, so Japan's secret societies. To, to ban. Oh, to ban. ban. Sorry, friend, sorry. Secret societies, so it is. Such as For which? example, free, Freemasons. Yeah. Oh, they're just lads having a laugh. 
leaves them no, be. They, 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 they they're know. running. They're running the show through their lawyers. They're in charge of all the law. They're, who do you think is in, in charge of this country? They're not the politicians. It's the legal mafia that's in charge of our country now, and they've they trapped everybody. I don't, I don't think anybody's in charge of our country, Patrick. I think it's pretty much a rudderless ship, and it's generally sailing towards the sun, but slowly and zigzagging, of course. But well, it's gone too near the sun. I think we're like Icarus with the, the wax on our wings is starting to melt. So it is. I think that uh, the lawyers are to blame for most of what's going wrong in our country, from immigration all the way through to criminals on the street. That's uh, the human rights that they've all got nowadays. Now, you're sounding like a frightened man here. Well, I think I am a little bit for this country. Thankfully, there are other countries to go to, but I'd rather have this great country back, brought back to what it used to be. It's better than it ever was, Patrick. Come on, you've been reading the papers, love. Well, that's what they're there for, to be read, isn't it? Discerningly, though, with a jaundiced eye. I don't read in the papers that it's the lawyers to be blamed for everything. That's my own conclusion. Right. You show me a paper that, sh that says the legal mafia is to be blamed for everything that's gone wrong. Because the, they don't say that because the owners of the papers are afraid to say it themselves. Patrick, this so is cloud are. cuckoo stuff, so, so it is. <laughs> I don't think at all that it is. Absolute fantasy. Have you ever had much to do with lawyers? Well, yes. But uh, well, well, how would you quantify much? <laughs> Give me have much. You ever, have you ever had to retain one or go, uh, or, or go to court or have a divorce or anything like that? Ah. It's a bit of a personal question. Don't have to answer that. No, but, but am, I, am I right in thinking that you've been screwed for alimony and you resent the entire profession? Uh, no, it's, it's not that I only see it in my own case. I have been, yes, but I, I believe that... So I'm here we go, Patrick. Look, bless your cotton socks. Thank you for making me look so good. Here it is. You've been screwed by your other half, who's done a runner, and you're blaming the entire legal profession for the fact that the whole country's gone to the dogs. It's a psychological it's not, thing, Patrick. I, I, it's not only on the basis of that. It's on the basis of the fact that, uh, okay, everybody complains about immigration and they blame the No, everybody doesn't. It. No, no, let's put, use some precision here. Everybody doesn't complain about immigration. An awful lot of people are very grateful for it because otherwise their business would go to the wall because not very many I'm British... I'm not talking about the Poles. They're not immigrants. They're EU people. I'm talking about people coming in from a very different cultures. Uh, and not the everybody complains about the that. Undermining the fabric of our Western society. What? 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 Again, establish fabric it's for me. It's not their fault. I know it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Well, no, I, we're assuming that there is a fault. There's nothing wrong with w what we're talking about. I. It's not the fault of the, of the immigrants. It's not the fault of the immigrants. They're only doing what, 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 what but, you're, but that, to agree with what you've just said means you have to accept that some harm is being done. I don't accept that there's yes, any harm being not, done. Therefore, there's the no fault. fault people who come in. There's the no fault, fault to be allocated. There's no fault They're to be allocated. A through letting these people in. There's no fault to be allocated because no harm is being done. When no harm is being done, there is no blame that needs to be apportioned. Harm. You say no harm being done. The Zero. entire English nation. If being anything, dissolved. we've benefited enormously from it. Not just in terms of from being what? able to from, from from having people blow us up in London in in buses. That's a benefit, is it? It's not the IRA these days that are blowing you people up. It's the Muslims. When people like yourself, who are damaged by a couple or three little things that you have seen, flesh out across the vista of your mind a whole series of vast beliefs because you're unable to notice that it's little things that piss you off no it's not little things i'm very your alimony person, actually your alimony that's nothing your alimony gave, is you the reason why you've got a down on that. i'll tell you a bit more about that if your you like. alimony i gave that i gave it and all i got there and it willingly. took me three minutes to work out that you're one of these people no, you've assumed it. You've assumed it. I would tell you... You've got a bad like. alimony case. You probably deserved I, it. And so as a result of that, the lawyers are running I, the country. Can't you no, recognise no, 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 no. what a pig ignorant position that is to take? 
No, it's not because and to suggest, being, and to suggest, that the mi- and, and to suggest, and to suggest, and to suggest that, and to suggest that, 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 that the millions of people who have legally come to this country and enriched this country enormously, not just economically, but culturally and sportingly, should all be tarred with the same brush as a bunch of mad homicidal terrorist maniacs is one of the most stinking connections I've heard in my 56 years this time round on this planet. Patrick, oh whoever you are, calling from wherever you're calling from. Well, let me just tell you that you've just... Which is where? You set up a straw man... Which is where are you calling from? I'm calling... uh, That doesn't really make any difference, does it, no? Yes, it does, because if you're not calling from the country of your birth, you're a bloody immigrant yourself. I'm not. I'm in the European Union. I'm in another part of the European Union. I don't recognise countries. I recognise the European Union. How, how bla- how, that's convenient, isn't it? That's convenient, isn't it? You, you're, a, eh? you're a non-European immigration. Uh? I'm not talking about people, Christian people moving around. Do you around know what, Patrick? It's, pra- it's practically a recognised psychological disorder to move logic around in the way that you are to suit yourself. You you're, need a good wake-up call. You really do. Listen to what I said. You I think you need to speak to somebody. Argument, I think you should go- your own straw man and not argue take with this me. to your doctor. I think you should take this to well, your that's doctor. A very to, cheap job. to your I'm GP. Really disappointed with you now. Because you're getting very close. You're getting very close to being very upset. No, I'm not at all. Yes, you are. I you're getting very you, close you, to getting, you, and you need to chill out. By giving me an argument, and you need more self-awareness, Partick. More I self-awareness. Think I've got plenty of self-awareness. I think I've got plenty of self-awareness. But you didn't know till I pointed it out to you that the reason you think that lawyers are screwing the country is because one lawyer beat your lawyer, and that's why you're paying more alimony than you'd like to. No, not at all. It was my lawyer that screwed me, and in the end, I sacked him and gave the money willingly. There you he are. You didn't know that. There you are. You see, and as a result I'd of pay and for as a re- that woman, I'd rather pay that woman and, and uh, who, who may not have been a good wife was a perfectly good mother. I'd rather have paid her than pay the lawyers. And if I hadn't sacked the lawyer, neither of us would have got anything. So I sacked the lawyers and simply gave it to her. What's the best book That's you've ever read, Patrick? Truth. That's the God's honest truth. What's the best book you've ever read? Lawyers, neither me or her would have got a B now. There is. What's the best book you've ever read? The Bible. You liar. It's the best book in the world. You liar. It's not. Are it's you winding me up here? That is the worst book in the world. It's the best book I have in never the world. met anybody. I have never met anybody who read the Bible all the way through. Of course I read many times. From you start to finish. A... Matt, have of you ever read I've the Bible? Have you sat down, finish, read the Bible? And, and, Beautiful. I, but nice, I wouldn't, not leave, not I wouldn't read places Matt. like Leviticus or Deuteronomy many times because these have been superseded. And it's not just because I know how it ends. How but I can't be asked to read the Bible. Well, he gets well, killed, doesn't he? Well, if he can't be asked to read it, how do you know it's a bad book? He gets executed. You defeated your own argument. He gets executed. He I gets saw executed. the film. I didn't need to read the book. Jesus Christ? Yes, yes I saw... he's executed yes. for our sins. Yes. But then he raises again. If no, he doesn't no come re- back. Resurrection, we're of all men. No, he doesn't come back, then. Patrick. Don't be silly. That that mumbo jumbo. That's the whole Christian the faith. You'll see him in the most enormous. Of every knee shall bow. Disservice. Every knee shall bow. So Where exactly in Ireland are you problem. from, Patrick? Because your accent is skidding around like nobody's business. Bill. Right. You know, it's skidding around like Massa at Silverstone. It is. You're die. sometimes facing the, the wrong bloody direction. I don't think you're a paddy at all. You You're a plastic think. paddy. That's my you think view. I'm a plastic paddy, and I'm entitled to it. Thank you for your call. Well, okay. Well. Is he regular? Um, to James every now and then, yes. Um, but we've got Sizemore on Skype, who I believe is an actually Irish man. Hello there. Hello, Tommy. Sizemore, hello. Hello, Tommy. Can hello. you hear me? Yeah, we can. Can you hear me? It's not a perfect yeah. line, but as long as you take your time, we'll get your point. Okay, we are so down a wee bit here. You still speed in this country. Have been for many years. You have been in this country for many years. I grew, grew up, was born and bred in this country. Say that first. He grew up, was born and bred in this country. Okay. <coughs> and I'd like to make a comment. By all means.
There's an awful lag in this line tonight for some strange reason. Sizemorg, I'm going to cut you off and call you straight back. So don't go anywhere. I'll cut you off. I'll do this. I'll take another landline yes. call. Will I? Yes. How oh, Irish is that? I'll take another landline call, will I? Good evening or good day, wherever you're calling from. Play radio here. Peter Chapman is a bloody legend! I disagree. <laughs> Who's Peter Chapman? Oh, uh, just a listener, I think. Contributor. Excellent. Um, we have Sizemore back on Skype. Let's try that one, Sizemore. Hello. You sound a little bit clearer Hello. to me, yeah? Can you hear me now, Sizemore? I can hear you, Tommy, yes. That sounds better, doesn't it? So, you're telling us you were born and bred in this country, and your point? I was going to comment on your um, political future career. Oh, excellent. Um, you have to realise, of course, that, that everything to do with politics is contrived, and that uh, the populists have absolutely no control whatsoever on anything that is done. Horlicks. Well, it's a fact of life. Uh, if you would like to discuss the subject, I would be more than happy to oblige you. Yeah, I get the impression that you just want to hear the sound of your own voice. Not so. Well, I'm not convinced it's a very good place to start because... I shall be shocked to the point of stripping buck naked and running all the way down to the English Channel to re-baptise myself a Wally if it turns out that there is the slightest shred of truth in what you just said, Cocker. Okay. It's an absolute fact, Tommy that 85% uh, of the British laws are made in Europe. Cobbler. They're adhered to by Parliament. Oh, cobbler. You know it. Cobbler. I know it. Cobbler. And so does 95% of the people who are listening to this video. You're just internet, making up numbers radio. now. Don't you, know that, don't you know that 78% of all statistics are fiction? Are made up on the spot. Yes. Yes, I do. Like you just did then. Yes. Exactly. I do know what I'm talking about, whereas no, I you think don't. you may not. No, you don't. Absolute cobblers. Oh, <laughs> Absolute cobblers. Did they be? Uh, it's just dreadful, dreadful paranoia cobblers. Par it's not paranoia, it's, it's fact. Paranoia, it's borderline juvenile conspiracy theories. The EU are the easiest boogeyman for people who need a boogeyman to conjure up. Because they're foreigners. Oh, they've got to be up to no good. You don't need a boogeyman. What you need to do is read government documents and you'll find out the truth. And if you're willing to explain... Name one. Name one. If you're... L n l listen to me uh, no, no, a no, second, na please. Name a government if document you are you willing as a presenter... Name a bloody government one. document you want me to read. Name one. One. Full uh, name. Offhand, can't remember any. Yeah. Bugger off. Waste of time. I, I have to say, if you want an argument with me, you're fine. You've got to be good, though. Because I pay attention. Good effort, Sizemore. Well, not really. Good voice he had, didn't he? Yeah, good voice. But I, if he says it's fact, then, you know, I'd be interested to hear where he got his facts from. Well, that's what I just said to him. But there was that Lisbon Treaty, wasn't there? That, that Ireland, was it the Lisbon Treaty? Protocol. Uh, uh, protocol. Um, and Ireland was, I believe, the only country that got a vote on it. Everybody else's government passed it through without referendum. Mm -hmm. And the Irish voted against it, which would then block it from coming into fruition. However, they're thinking of gazumping the Irish vote anyway, and just going ahead with it. Is that fair? That's that's not far from the truth. What was the Irish vote? What, in what, what do you mean? The, the vote percentage, yes or no? I have no idea. It was 52, 48%. Right, okay. Okay, but still, it's a lost vote, so you can't just ignore that fact and just go ahead with it anyway. I mean, our government aren't giving us a referendum on it, but I think that we'd probably vote against it. 
Would we know enough to vote against it? Well, would you vote against it? I would, but that was the other problem. But what would you because, be voting against? Well, because the document is a 210-page, very complicated document that ah. uh, no one can really understand. Um, and people see that as them making it... No. They, well, they, a lot of people It's got to be think, thorough, hasn't it? Look, well, it's, yes, it's got to be thorough, but a lot of people will say to you, right, and this is in my opinion, a lot of people will say to you, they make these things long purely to scare people. No. That's ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> they make them long because they need to be long to get everything. I appreciate get everything that. Right. I mean, have you ever read an Act of Parliament? It. No, thank God. No, exactly. Why not? They're long and they're thorough. You get grown men and women sitting up all through the night discussing individual words that go into a piece of legislation because it has to be preciously intact. Otherwise, a court can't make a judgment based on the legislation if it is not preciously intact. And that means thoroughness. And that means extensiveness. And in the case of something like the um, Lisbon Protocol, it was, um, it was a pretty long document. Oh, uh, I'll tell you it was funny. Ken Clark, he admitted uh, that nobody read Maastricht, mm. the Maastricht Treaty. He said, no, of course not. In the end, you go with whether you broadly think it's a decent idea to attach ourselves to an enormous economic free trade area, which is basically what the EU is, or to try and go it alone. And you'd rather go it alone. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I apologise for that brief break in transmission, yes. which is due to technical problems beyond yes. our control. However, hopefully you can hear us again. Let's take a call. Good uh, evening, thank you for holding. Who's this? Oh, they didn't hold. Oh, they didn't hold. Email, just to say hello. Somebody there. Uh, hello? Email, just to say how much I have enjoyed Play Radio since discovering you guys after following James Whale over. I'm catching up with all the shows via the podcast archives. The NTBBS has me... NTTBS. Yes. Has me in stitches. Anyway, I know you like a bet. This isn't me, is it? Do I like a bet? Oh, oh I do. do you? <laughs> I like a bet. Come on. Uh, I know you like a bet. Just looking through tomorrow's horses while I listen. Is Magpine the 220 at Lingfield assigned, do you think? About eight to one. Might have a small investment. Who's riding? Mick in Norwich? Who's on the uh, magpie? Anyway, keep up the work. It's nice to hear radio as it should be again. I'll try and spread the word as I'm a taxi driver. So I tell all the customers who are interested. Need some car stickers, perhaps, to raise your profile a bit more. Mick in Norwich. Do we do car stickers? I raised the issue of car stickers. never went... <laughs> no. Take another call. Evening. Thank you for calling. It's Play Radio here. Peter Chapman is a Tampax. That's a brand name, isn't it? Um, I believe so, yes. Tampon is the word, isn't it? Yes. But Tampax yes. is the proprietary brand. Uh -huh. Matthew Parker emails. Have you heard about the latest Christian fad in Florida? The Lakeland Revival, where people say they are getting healed, falling over when they're prayed for, and claiming their God is doing amazing things. What a tedious load of old bollocks. Still, fascinating to watch. It's all over YouTube. Isn't it incredible what some people let themselves believe without a single solitary scrap of evidence for it outside the need for comfort and easy answers? That's Matt, a.k.a. Spurious. Yeah, but we all want a bit of comfort, don't we? Mm. It's terrifying being a human being otherwise, unless you've got something to hold on to. Yes, you have to have something to It's like lonely it. and... Yeah. Uh, the world's a daunting place. Frightening, you know, that's why I always say cows have got it lucky, because I know they end up in the abattoir, but they don't know that <laughs> through their life. No, they don't see it coming, do they? No, no. And this from uh, Ricky in Newcastle. Regarding a new political party, what logo or symbol should we adopt? How about a nice swan? I like Oscar's idea of the fit party, so perhaps an image of a well-managed torso. <laughs> discuss. Can I be chief designer? Good to hear you again, fella. Um, we do need a, some kind of a symbol. Yes, we And do. some colours. I like red, black and white. Red, black. Why red, black and white? Well, they're just a powerful combination, I think, of clear colours, and red's a good colour. But red's the Labour Party's colour already, isn't it? Well, they're a bit pink, really, aren't they? <laughs> they're not that red. No. But red, black and white is a good, strong combination. Thank you for that, uh, Ricky. Dunks got back again. Party suggestion name New Hope, Your Democracy, People Power. Mm. Um, I'm not convinced about any of the ideas, but we need a name. 
And we'll give this a go. We're not going to do it instantly. It'll take um, some weeks and months, but I'm going to set up a website and invite um, people to join and kick party ideas around, policies around and things yep. like that and have votes. And this is going to be the key thing. If we do manage to take it forward and get ourselves somebody who's prepared to stand, two people will need to stand in two constituencies at the next general election. So we've got a couple of years. Um, and form our policies online so that everybody gets to vote and everybody feels as though they have played a part in it. Mm -hmm. Be yeah. worth playing with. Hello, Tommy. This is from Peter Collins. If you did form a political party, would you, after a lot of careful thought, appoint <laughs> Timmy <laughs> Mallet as your cultural secretary? <laughs> Bearing in mind that here's a man with vast experience in the entertainment industry and a man who could change the whole outlook in shaping the future culture of this country. I think personally, Timmy Mallet would be an excellent member of your future cabinet, Tommy Boyd, if you appointed him, Peter from Birmingham. Very silly idea. Thank you for that. We've got some nice emails coming in. Shall I stick with them for a second? I'm just thinking about the Timmy Mallet idea. I mean, you could bring in Mallet's Mallet to sort of all, you know, settle an argument between two politicians. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, Steve says. Which of these would be preferable? 34% of the electorate turning out and making a considered informed decision about who they want to elect. Or, the apathetic 66% of voters being compelled to pitch up at the polling station and then putting a random cross on the voting slip, which means that the result of the election not being representative of the views of the electorate. I'd suggest that people who are apathetic about party politics do not know what policies they would support, but wouldn't know which candidate's manifesto contains those policies. Enjoying the show, says Steve. This is in, in reference to somebody's suggestion earlier that perhaps there should be compulsory voting. Yes, that was my suggestion. I'm against anything compulsory, really. But the, the thing is, actually, the actual make, voting for a party isn't compulsory, but getting off your arse and showing that you care would be. So you could have a, all the parties in a box, but then you would have a non-vote box. So you mm. just get up, walk in, tick the non-vote box, walk out. What but a waste least, of 15 minutes yes, of your life. Yes, but at least you've got up to say that you don't want to vote. Mm. And if you had 66% of people that didn't want to vote, I mm. suppose you just don't go to vote, do you? Yeah. It's the same. I'd sooner make politics so accessible and such a valuable thing to be a part of that more people decided to get involved and, and have their votes. Because after all, there's only a few issues that I really care all that much about, really. I mean, I don't know what to do about Northern Rock, so I just wouldn't get involved in that one right. unless I had to. Um, and I'm not too sure where I stand on a whole number of issues, because often your vote, your vote is borderline one way or the other, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, one yeah. morning you feel in favour of this, and the next morning you feel you're opposed to mm -hmm. it. And, but there are one or two things that I feel quite... I feel very strongly about education. I'd knock every school down and start all over again, just because... I can't yet think of a better way of educating our children, although I think the internet is beginning to provide us with a better way. It uh, doesn't mean to say that we should continue to corral our youngsters into these schools no. and then kick them out at every playtime and every lunchtime so that they're totally unsupervised and you have the law of the jungle across this enormous expanse of tarmac where any amount of malpractice and bad social habits are formed, um, which people then carry with them into the workplace and into their family life. Um, hierarchies based on strength and, um, and, and cowardice and things. And that's what people learn and take away from their schooling. So do away with schools, I think, and, and let's start all over again. Lisa has sent in a, Is this another that, picture no, of her that's topless? that's the same topless picture. Oh, I see. You just went to it straight away as soon as you saw that somebody had sent in a topless. This well, from Seamus O'Reilly. Email studio at playradio.com. Thank you for your emails. You can call 01243... 556060, or you can Skype us. We're at play.radio.uk. Seamus says, if there was more crime in the 50s, but it was not reported, if it was not reported, how do you know how much crime there was? Is one question. It's a good question. I'm not sure if that's what I said, but it's useful for Seamus to think that that's what I said. Um, very few things were reported back then, but we're talk what I'm talking about here is not so much how much crime there was but how much reportage there was. And I'm absolutely certain that reportage in the 50s was very different from what it is now. Let me give you an example. Uh, during the 50s, two of the most famous people in Britain had an affair, Sid James and Barbara Windsor. Now, if that happened in this day and age, don't you think it would have been reported right, left and centre? Yes. But in fact, it just simply never got out. Right. It was known to an awful lot of people, but it never got in the papers. Why not? because 
Not so much was reported. There wasn't so much media. Mm. There wasn't well, 24 hour television news. Well, um, would I be right in thinking, though, that these days we do have a culture of everybody wants to be a celebrity? That's why the eye is on celebrity so much mm. that these things get reported more. Whereas back Everything in the 50s, everybody appreciated celebrities but didn't particularly want to be one. Uh, no. There was less was reported. Less was reported in the newspapers. The newspapers were, and the television news was almost entirely on issues and things that were happening. So if you had the, like a half hour television news programme, it would all be given over to things that were going on in Parliament, what politicians were saying. There was very little um, salacious reporting of crime, which is huge now. If you listen to, if you listen to most uh, news bulletins, especially on radio, mm. it's so-and-so's been stabbed, so-and-so has been tortured and then murdered, you know. Well, every time I switch on Five Live, if there's not a sport event, they're going on about what do we do about knife crime? What about David Davis? What about That's Max right. Mosley? What about, you know, the, the legal age of abortion, etc., etc.? And don't get me wrong, a lot of the things that are reported, I think, do an awful lot of good. Um, if we'd had, um, uh, if we'd had full reporting and cameras in the trenches during the First World War, I think it would have ended by November 1914 because the public would have said, "We're not putting up with this. This isn't right." But because what happened was there wasn't that reportage, there was only military reports which were adjusted so that people at home were getting the kind of news that the government needed us to be getting so mm. that we stuck behind the idea of fighting the Germans in the trenches, that the war lasted until 1918. So reporting does do an awful lot of good, but it also frightens an awful lot of people. Seamus goes on, if you carry a knife, you're gay, and it's not cool to be the only gay in the village. This is a reference to... Um, Rebranding knife crime. Re yeah, make, saying that people who carry knives are wallies rather than you know, they're dangerous people who deserve to be interviewed and end every sentence with the word in it. Use a spoon instead of a knife. He says you're just stirring it now. I think Alan Caddick should front the show whilst James Wilde is away and five, tell Patrick that Bank Freemason is, is a twat. Is it? Ban Freakmason. Ban Freakmason, yeah. Mm. I, uh, have you had a drink, Seamus? If not, why not? How do you feel about a DVD release of Tommy Shear's legendary stand-up routine, T.C. Raymond? Do we know what that's about? No, Tommy Shear's is over my head. Um, I would imagine it's salacious, or since he's ended with a word. I won't repeat, actually, even here, which is a slightly racist term. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see that. Uncomfortable about. I can only assume that that's the basis of the... It's, 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 I'm, I'm guessing it's a, some sort of racist routine. That email is not for you. That email is not for me. The next email is Mark in Derby. Hello, Mark. Cobblers, he says. I'm interested to know what, if anything, does Tommy Boy think is wrong with this country? Anything? Or do you think everything is just fine? What about the Iraq war? There's no motive for this other than being interested in what Mr Boyd thinks. I wish I lived in his world. He makes everything seem so innocent. Mark in Derby. Well, that's lazy, Mark, really. You're not paying attention, mate. What I'm saying is that um, too, many, too many of us love the idea that the world is going to hell in a handcart, and it isn't. And if you don't believe me, then read any social history you like of this country over the last hundred years, and then you'll learn, boy. You'll learn. No, there's things wrong with this country, but the Iraq war is not one of them. We're right to be in Iraq, and I support that, even though I'm a pacifist. Mm -hmm. I think we were right to get rid of Saddam Hussein for the sake of the Iraqi people. Well, where do you stand on Iran, then, with the, um, the nuclear power station and pretty much, you know, the West, inverted commas, saying that, it, you know, if you continue with your nuclear stuff, that we're going to invade you and stop you from doing it? Where do you stand on that? Well, I'm not convinced that the leader of Iran is carrying out the atrocities against his fellow Iranians that Saddam was. No. So I'm in favor, I was in favour of us getting rid of Saddam Hussein, who was a bad man. Yes, without question. Although he came through a bad system, it wasn't entirely his fault. He shot his first man dead when he was 14. Wow. Killed a lot of people with his own hand, with his own gun. That was the world he lived in. But it was no, it was no man to be a, a leader of the fourth largest army on earth. All right? And I'm not sure whether in Iran, whilst there might be some, some laws that we don't agree with, I'm not quite sure whether there is the concentrated um, war of uh, nerve gas and attrition against an entire race within his country, such as Saddam waged on the Kurds in Iran. Mm -hmm. So I don't think their humanitarian 
record is anywhere near as bad as Saddam Hussein's. Whether they pose a threat to the Middle East, who doesn't pose a threat to peace in the Middle East? Mm. Who doesn't? Israel does, the Palestinians do, Syria does. Um, certainly, you know, Beirut has never been... <laughs> Beirut has just been a war zone for the last 30 or 40 years. It's a tinderbox in the Middle East. And is Iran a greater threat to peace and stability in the Middle East than any of the others? I suspect not. Do you think it's fair that we should invade them just because they want to use nuclear power and we don't believe them? Not yet. But if it came to it, then I would support it. I, I like the idea of the world having a police force, and there are a lot worse countries could do that than the United States of America. Mm -hmm. They're not a bad lot, generally speaking. That's my view. Thank you for asking. What about Sorry. you? What do you think? Um, what do I, I think uh, we have nuclear power stations. Why shouldn't they? I think we should leave them alone. Okay. Here's Richard... Uh, Hodinot in uh, Cleveland, Lancashire. Thanks for this, Richard. Great to hear you again, Tommy. It's been a long time since you suddenly left talk radio and many sticks have floated under the bridge. So what was the real reason for leaving? Um, if you meant talk radio, if you do mean talk radio rather than talk sport, Richard, the reason I left talk radio is because I was fired by Kelvin McKenzie on day one. I'm quite proud of being the first person to... Um, the first person he fired... So you literally so, walked in that morning as he did and he went, that's it, see you Pretty later. much, yeah, which is pretty good, pretty cool. Um, Seamus has come back, Seamus O'Reilly has said, it's Seamus it was who took me to task for saying that, um, that I'm saying that the world is a much better place than it used to be. His first email said, if there was more crime in the 50s but it was not reported, if it was not reported, how do you know how much crime there was? And my point there... Seamus, and I think you'll find it was excellently made, is that less, was, much less was reported in the 50s of everything was reported. So I said, for example, Sid, James and Barbara Windsor had a long-standing love affair, and there was love involved as well as whatever else, but it didn't get in the papers because less was reported back then. So Seamus comes back and says, it is true to say if Sid and Babs had an affair today, it would be big news, because one of them is dead. What an arsehole. Seamus, you're wasting my time. I've got, on, you, you know, um, plenty of other things. I don't need a drink to listen to your show, but it helps. Lots of love. And then it's signed, JP. Who's that, then? No idea. That's not for this station. No, OK. Uh, can I request a bit of... Cascada. Cas yeah. What's that made of? That's for one of our other services, Play One. Oh, OK. They all come to the same email address. All right, splendid. So where have we got to? It's uh, 25 past 10 in the United Kingdom. Well, it's we whatever... Pay some bills. Pay some bills, we'll do that. A uh, reminder that uh, telephone number is 01243 55 60 60. You can Skype at play.radio UK. And i um, grateful for the emails. Studio at playradio UK. Dot com and one of the things we're talking about is just mooching mooting mooching mooting the idea of starting some kind of political party on the internet where we get to vote for discuss and vote for the kind of policies that would then become the actual manifesto of the party and it might be quite nice for some of us to feel that we can actually have some kind of level of actual involvement in the things that go into those things this is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Taboo subjects will be discussed and opinions aired. If you're easily offended by an open-minded nature of mass debate, then this show is not for you. Play 2 UK. Headlines. The oldest son of the Back from the Dead canoeist says his world was crushed when he was told of his father's death. Mark Darwin and his brother Anthony have been giving evidence against their mother, Anne. She denies all charges against her. A suspect in the Madeleine McCann case has settled a libel bid over newspaper claims he was involved in her disappearance. A number of British papers are thought to have agreed to pay Robert Murat a total of half a million pounds. Soaring bills for petrol and food are being blamed for rocketing inflation. The latest figures show it's shot up to 3.8 per cent. And British Airways is warning passengers will have to deal with higher fares and fewer flights. Chief Executive Willie Walsh says price rises are absolutely inevitable because of the economic climate. Play 2 UK weather. OK, this evening and tonight, light rain continuing southeastwards overnight, perhaps turning moderate as it clears Kent later. The rest of the UK will see clear spells developing with rain or showers in the northwest. Wednesday, dry and sunny in the south of England and near the east coast, but turning cloudy later. Elsewhere, cloud and rain will gradually spread eastwards 
to affect the rest of the UK. You're up to date on Play 2 UK. What is she like, eh? Yeah, she's mad, isn't she? Yeah, always on for a laugh when we go on holiday. I didn't think she'd actually do it, though, did you? No way. So how much did they say the hospital bill was going to be? I don't understand Spanish. About 15 grand. Right. Hello, Mrs. Draper, it's Stacey. It's about Vicky. She had an accident in the hotel. She should be OK, but there's going to be a big bill from the hospital. You know that car Mr. Draper was thinking about? It can be a real problem if things go wrong on holiday, and an expensive one too. So if you're going on holiday with your mates this year, make sure you know about everything you need before you go. Visit fco.gov.uk slash travel for more information. Now, here's some important information you won't want to miss. Take it away, Paul. Ever wanted to know more about your favourite Play Radio DJ? What they're up to, what they look like, what they think, what's coming up in their shows? Well, now you can. Just go on to playradiouk.com slash blog and click on one of the DJ's faces. But beware, you may find out a little more than you bargained for. <laughs> Don't give up the day job, lads. The playradiouk.com network. Internet radio your way. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Matt's nipped for a, what do they call it in America? Not a slash, he's nipped for a comfort break. <laughs> yeah, God bless America. Um, and largely, God bless America, because I frankly rather have America running the world as the main superpower uh, than just about anywhere. Although, uh, and you might find this slightly surprising, I do trust the Chinese. We don't have to worry too much about what happens when the Chinese replace the United States as the world's. Uh, most influential superpower if they haven't already actually because broadly speaking they are a wise lot and a reasonably decent lot as well quite astonishing some of the bad press that they've had in the run-up to the Olympics again with so many lazy journalists wanting to depict them as uh, being a bunch of tyrants who are maniacally imprisoning and executing oh yeah okay too many people as far as uh, as I'm concerned um, but if you take the broad view of what the Chinese have achieved over the last 50 or 60 years since the Great March and Mao Zedong as we used to call him but it's now Mao Zedong uh, it's a fantastic achievement mainly because the country is now fed and watered and there was mass starvation only 50 or 60 years ago in China and they've come an awful long way in a very short time and, um, and power to them. Oh and by the way by the way if when you were little you argued that communism was quite a good idea and a lot of idealistic young people did believe that communism was quite a good idea and then you suddenly woke up and discovered that the Cold War was over and that communism had lost and everybody who heard you say that it wasn't a bad idea was rubbing your nose in it well you can just give them a call tonight and say hello <laughs> communism works because the world's biggest superpower and most successful economic nation is using a form of communism to achieve what they're achieving, which is considerable, isn't it, what China's achieved? <sighs> Young yes. Matthew. Yes. yes. Yeah. Email from Paul. Tommy, the unrestricted show is fantastic. Sign me up for the party, as long as that idiot Eduardo isn't leader. See, we're already getting schisms. Mm. Personality politics. What's important is the policies and forming policies. I would prefer Duncan Barkas, says Paul. <laughs> also, I think Matt has a big future on talk-based radio. And you'd like to do a bit more of that, wouldn't you? Um, I'd love to do a bit more. Enjoy but, your yeah. broadcasting generally. Yeah, enjoying Sunday DJing nights. DJing and things. James enjoying Wayland Sunday nights and, that, and yeah. James Wayne and the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. And what I like about the internet side of it is it is unrestricted, although we don't exploit that. No. But also, um, people are in charge as well as us because it's not like having a broadcaster up there and the unwashed are very lucky if their occasional text gets read out, mm. you know. And it's Ofcom that have done that, though. Yeah, I know. It's Ofcom that have put the broadcaster up there because the broadcaster in a regulated station has to have the control and the power, yes. otherwise they get the sack. Yes, um, and uh, so many so-called broadcasters aren't broadcasters, really. They're just a rent-a-gob, aren't they? Mm -hmm. you know, gob, yeah. on a, gob on a stick or something like that. So what should we do? Shall we formulate one or two policies, or shall we um, <clears throat> continue doodling, or well, shall we talk football, we can... or shall we talk um, sex? Well, it, it, it depends. Love. Love, yeah. Well, we, we're 
You pick the subject and we'll talk about it, Tommy. Okay, well, I'm always very interested in talking about relationships and sex and things like that, uh, obviously, but it always sounds as though you're being cheap when you start talking yeah. about sex. But uh, on the other hand, it, how often do you think about sex? Um, well, roughly? not every three or seven seconds, which is uh, what the people would, you know, statistics says, the, the research, let's say. Almost that often, though. Or, no, not... No? No. It's, it's, it's a good point. If men thought about sex every seven seconds, we'd get nothing done. Charlie Chaplin, just before he died, he said something that struck a chord with me. He said he never, ever, in the whole of his life, ever looked at a woman that he hadn't seen before without wondering about the possibilities of sex between him and her. Hmm. And that's true. We do all do that. G yes. We do. To, di to differing degrees, though. We do, though. To differing degrees. But we do. If we're really honest with ourselves, you have to be honest with yourself, otherwise you can't be honest with anybody else. You know, we do. Know thyself. It's really important. And, um, and I do. I'm being really honest. And I don't do it in a bad way. Or well, sometimes I have some sort of distracting sort of little, mm. not fantasies, but, mm. you know, what I'm talking about mm. here. Yeah, I don't want to go into them. No, no. Well, I do, actually, but that's definitely for another show. Um, I'm looking now, Matt's prepared me one or two bits and pieces. Uh, he's a very diligent man, is Matt. And uh, he's found... Is this a website that provides us with the UK Talk Radio Top Ten? Yeah. Okay. Is this what somebody these, reckons... These are basically um, what somebody dis has decided through papers, websites, whatever's going oh, okay. on, that this week these are the top ten yeah. subjects that people are talking about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just quickly, th Matt Do Dolphin mm -hmm. has Skyped. Welcome back, Tommy. Great to hear you. Will the human zoo be returning? Matt from Sully Hull. Uh, that, in some form, undoubtedly. Well, I mean... With a station like this, with no screening of calls, theoretically the human zoo never closes. No. Although you hope that it's not just littered with human zoo, because you'd like to get some decent debate going in the same time. Yeah, um, the human zoo has, having been killed off at um, Talk Sport, where, where I did it, where it was at one point getting 36,000 calls um, an hour, which wow. was a, some kind of world record. Mm. But of course it was lots of people dialing back. Yes. You see, so if somebody dialed ten times... They in an hour, they got time. logged as being ten callers. I mean, we do the human zoo on a Sunday night still. Yeah. But it's worth remembering that it was nowhere near as good as people like to remember it. Mm. That's no, right. Nothing a lot is. of what you get is drivel. Uh, oh, you did. Forty-five minutes of drivel you would get. And the best bits were often when a guy called Ash, who was my sort of oppo mm. on the human zoo, we'd talk about the callers. So we'd take three or four callers and then we'd talk about them. And I'd say to Ash, what do you think of that lot, that Ash? And he'd go, well, not a lot really, mate, you know. And I go, no, they crap, were they? <laughs> and so that was quite uh, amusing that we diss all these people who some of them would put a great deal of effort into their... It was the same with... Um, calls. What was his name? The foreign guy. Channel 4 came in to, vid to film us. Oh, yeah. And uh, Igor, Igor rang up with the jingles, that's yeah. right, and he put all this effort in and it was I know. awful. Yeah, did you see that go out, that Channel I 4 did, program? I did, yes. Did you? I did, yes. Mm, and it was about it? three minutes long? Two seconds of you two saying, of go on, Igor, you're on the air, yeah. and then Igor playing some jingles, and that was it. Yeah. And they sent a man down with a camera and all the rest of it for a whole yeah. evening. Yeah. Filmed everything for yeah. about an hour and a half. Got in our way. Even asked us to do things over again, even though the show was live, mm -hmm. and none of it went We had to watch our language. Uh, the UK Talk Radio Top Ten are apparently the disappearing canoeist. Mm. That's a dead story, isn't it? Dead duck. Well, it's just been reignited because they're, they're trying his wife, aren't they? And the sons yeah. have come out and said that they feel betrayed by their family. And Inflation is at an 11-year high. I don't want to talk about that, do you? Not really. No. Knife crime. We're on to knife crime again. That's not going to go away, is it? No. You see, what you could do is ban all knives. It's a thought that I have had during the week. Because you don't actually need, really, knives for anything in the kitchen. No, if you, you buy don't. everything pre-sliced. Pre-sliced. Yeah. Um, you can get pre-grated cheese these days. Pre-grated cheese, uh, sliced bread. What do you need a knife for? Hmm. And, and you, you don't need a knife in the kitchen. You certainly don't need a knife walking around the streets. No. Uh, and people will say, well, you need a knife t to eat your dinner. But you don't, do you? You can just use the side of a fork and mm -hmm. go through a potato, won't it? Mm-hmm. 
Won't meat go, won't go through a steak so well, but no, it won't. But um, but would you, mm, could you eat a steak without a knife? If it was sliced thin, just mm. about. And if it means that there's no knife crime because there are no knives, because they're banned handguns, mm -hmm. and there are no handguns. No, especially not in the kitchen. And so there's still people being shot, but there are legal handguns. Mm. So there's less handgun crime, and you know, thank God, since Dunblane, we haven't had another Dunblane. Mm. Touch yeah, wood. Still touch wood a million times over. There's still probably plenty of maniacs like Thomas Hamilton um, out there, but they ain't got no handguns, so they ain't doing it. So if we make cr knives illegal, all knives, then obviously you'd have to think a little bit more carefully when you go to the kitchen. But you wouldn't have to worry so much when you go down to the one stop to buy a bottle of wine. Woman hides body of baby in car. Let's take a quick call. Hello? Potatoes. What about them? You need a knife for potatoes. Mm, you don't. If you want to make cubes, you do. Why would you want to make cubes? You don't have to make cubes. Well, if you're doing a dish that wants potato that calls for potato cubes. Well, How are you going to make potato cubes with a spoon? How... Can you name... Or a fork. Uh, can you name a dish that calls for potato cubes? I can, in fact, I can, and I will. And the dish is uh, a dish that my wife makes, comprising of minced lamb, onions, tomatoes, in a uh, it's an authentic Bangladeshi dish. I don't know what it's called, no. but I've named it in spirit, and it has potato cubes. Without the potato cubes, it would be only half the dish. And you are prepared for the streets of Britain to run red with the blood of victims of knife crime to preserve the integrity of this unnamed Bangladeshi dish? For my own pleasure, absolutely. You're the kind of selfish man... Yes. ...that we need on board <laughs> for our political party. I would assume as your leader would be your next sentence. You would assume wrongly. Oh, well, we'll we work would, on that. Plenty we, of time. We would have you as our John Prescott stroke Dennis Skinner. That ah. is essential appendage of all major political parties. A Tebbit type character. The asshole. Oh, yes. Thank you, Master. <laughs> you could be... Our attendant asshole. He's gone. I think he was just happy with asshole, wasn't he? O one two four three, fifty five, sixty sixty. Mm. You don't need knives. In years to come, there won't be any knives, and they will laugh at us for having these weapons, these killing machine weapons, in the kitchen. It's a prehistoric, really, aren't they? Utterly prehistoric. Bring on lasers. And what? then you can sever somebody's limbs without ever getting caught with any DNA trace. <laughs> um, Martin Thomas has emailed, where is James Whale? Good to hear Tommy back on the radio, but where is James? He's James on is on top? holiday, yeah. You gone away? Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. He's gone abroad. Didn't quiz him, he's on holiday, it's not work, leave him be. Wettest summer on record. Where are all these people who used to go on and on about global warming at the moment. Mm. If we'd had three days of unconnected, of connected sunshine, they'll be all over the shop. Hosepipe bans, mm -hmm. drought warnings, people hoarding water, and the Green Party's going on about the fact that we must stop our carbon emissions because the Earth is going to cook. Well, where are they at the moment? I don't know. I mean, if China started killing more whales, that would explain the absence of Greenpeace. I don't think China has ever had or it, ever been accused of killing whales. I don't do, think who China, was the big Japanese. Japanese, my apologies. The, the, to them, to the Chinese nation. Mm, yes, to the Chinese nation. Yes, yeah. they've got much larger fish to fry. <laughs> Very good. Not really. No, whales are mammal. Barack Obama vows to pull out of Iraq. He's saying that he'll be, he'll get. U.S. troops out of Iraq in, I think, 15 months or 18 months if he's elected. 
18, I think it was. Something like it's that. It's written down there somewhere. Uh, BT invest on the internet. Robert Murat wins half a million pounds in compensation. These are suggested topics for conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that you ran them off for me. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, but it's not how conversation really works, is it? When you no. go down the pub. No, no, it's not pub chat, no. I mean, they're, they're serious issues of debate, really. Yes. Do you like Mar Barack Obama? Um, to be honest, I don't know enough about oh, him. Oh, okay, that's refreshing. Refreshing point of view. I don't know enough about it. Well done. I always, I always liked Bill Clinton. I, yeah. I think two terms is, is not enough for a guy that's making a success of a country. No. No, but then if they, they'd been able to have a president for longer than two terms, Reagan would have gone on until he lost his marble, you know, became demented. Yeah. And they used to turn medically yes. rather than True, if dementia. True, more than two terms, Clinton may never have got in. Yes. They're turning into a bit of a dynasty, aren't they, the United States? Because Jeb Bush apparently is thinking about running against whoever becomes president next the, time. The last thing we need Democrat. is another Bush in power. Well, well the, you know, we, if, if Hillary had got the nomination for the Democratic Party and had, had won, then we'd have had nothing but members of two families running the United States for 30 years. Mm -hmm. 30 years? Two families running it. Does that say a lot for America, the fact that only two families can be bothered to run their country? Or are any good at running it? Yeah. And they're, they're two families from either side, you know, the democ Democrats and Republics, aren't they? The, uh, the American president is more than just the leader of the political process. Oh, sure. He or she is somebody who stands as a kind of a representative of what the, how the country sees itself. So that's why nowadays they have to have a full head of hair and be reasonably active and, you know... And not eat donuts. Well, yeah, you don't get fat ones. No. I mean, John McCain's going to struggle, isn't he? He's got the uh, POW credentials, which, you know, are going to strengthen his case as being, you know, an all-American guy. But um, he's getting on a bit. And as yeah, you say, he's... He can't lift his arms further Can't lift his that. arms further than what you just did. Shoulder height, yeah. Never Shoulder. trust the man who can't get his hands above his head. Where'd you come across that? I just came out. I didn't Is even it? think about it. Yeah, fair enough. Are we paying the rent? We are. We'll do that. Sunday night just got better on Play 2 UK. Hello there, this is Sean Williamson. All right then, it's it's Barry from EastEnders. Don't you ever shut your great big fat cake hole up. If you're listening to me now, that means you've missed me. But don't worry, yes, you can hear me again at playradiouk.com slash podcast. Hershey's Half Hour. 30 minutes of top flight entertainment expertly crammed into two hours. Sundays from four on Play 2 UK. Websites don't always work to their full potential. In fact, they can seem like a mystic art. Wouldn't it be great if you had someone on hand to wave a magic wand that would optimize, improve, and increase traffic to your website? Fear no more. The Web Wizard is here dispensing web wisdom and free tips. Email your question to Jason Rudland, the Play 2 Web Wizard, wizard at playradiouk.com. Then listen at 2.30 p.m. on the last Thursday of every month. The Web Wizard on Play 2 with Argo Internet Business Consultants. Growing your ideas. Click argo.uk.com. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Yeah, and it's Tommy standing in for James Whale, who's on his holes with Matt. Uh, you can email... Well, James isn't on his holidays with Matt. No. No. Just, just to clarify, I'm here. Have you ever been on holiday with a bloke? Yes. A mate? Yes. Fantastic, isn't it? It's a good laugh. Yes. Drink was taken. Oh, yes. And bars were visited, and nightclubs were visited. Many, many. And there was Hanky Panky. Where was this? Um, Magalove, two years in a row. Fantastic, <laughs> two years in a row. Magalove, and Magalove. it wasn't quite so good the second time round, was it? Uh, it was better. We went oh, with more it? of our friends. Oh, okay. Four of us That's went for the first time, and then twelve of us went for the second. Absolutely excellent. Although we did get into a fight. Did you? In the second holiday, between ourselves, which is strange. You fought each other? Well, two of us got into a fight between each other. I can't remember exactly over what. Two friends? Yes. A, phys uh, a real fight, a physical fight? Yeah, I wouldn't call it a real fight. It was a, it was a physical scuffle. Scuffle. Yes. Um, but what happens when you get more well, arms wailing like yeah, men do, and they can't so really fight. One pulling the other off the other and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, he's not worth it. Yeah, leave him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk away. Yeah. 
Yeah. Bless both you, both guys really glad to be hauled apart. Because <laughs> yes. neither guys really knew what to do to finish it. That's right. No. Have you ever had to finish a fight? Uh, no. Look. Well, as I say, luckily, luckily I've never been in a proper fight. I've been on the end of a beating, but never a... What happened? A proper fight. Um, well, I'll tell you what happened. Um, a guy um, who I actually became friends with after, in the aftermath that of what happened. happened. Yeah. Um, a guy who had been taking the mickey out of me, um, who I caught the bus with at school, um, had given me a whole 15 minutes of pure hell um, on the way back, just taking the mick and stuff, lived in my village. I think, you know, casting my mind back, I probably had a day of it already with the problems I had with the kids in my class anyway. Um, I decided I would stick up for myself. I got off the bus, I gave him a push, I threw him a punch, and he knocked me clean out with one of them. Did he really? Yeah. Where'd he catch you? On the nose. Yeah. That hurts being punched on the nose. It does. And the horrible thing is you get back up again and your eyes are streaming and everyone stands around laughing at you going, he's crying. And it's like, yeah. no, I've just been punched in the nose. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, 15. 15. Yeah. Yeah, and now you just run away. Um, no, now luckily I, A, don't get myself into fights and B, can no. bloody well talk my way out of them. Yes. Very good. What happened to me was I was walking past a guy in a nightclub and he suddenly grabbed my hair and started to punch me with the other hand. That was nice. And then he started to pull my head down towards his feet and it was clear he was going to kick me in the head. Wow. And he had my hair. And you can't get away if somebody's got your hair. Mm. So... I was stuck. What to do? And from nowhere, and I'd had a few beers, I remembered a piece of advice my father gave me, who had to look after himself because he was a Newcastle boy right. and oh. times were rough. Yes, yes. And he was a Newcastle boys boxing champion four years in a row. <laughs> 59 fights, 56 wins. It's not bad. Yeah. So he knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he said, right, he said to me, I won't tell you too much. He said, but if you can, run. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> Then what? If there's several of them and you can't run, he said, pick one of them and give them a bloody good hiding. Mm. Whilst they're giving you a bloody good hiding. <laughs> I said, <know>. okay. <laughs> Where's anything this going, Dad? <laughs> yeah, anything else? He said, yes. He said, if you really want to end it, he said, grab them where it hurts. Mm. Okay. Sometimes it's the only thing you can do. Well, I've only done it once in my life, but I'd do it again if I had to because it worked. So this fella, big lad, is pulling my head down towards his feet and I can see that I'm going to get a kick in about two seconds. So I reached out and I took hold. And do you know what happened next? Did he let go and call you gay and walk off? He let go like that and he stood back three or four feet and people got in between us and he looked at me and it was a look of, he was a big lad and it was a look of total fear. <laughs> He was terrified because of. He realised. He thought he was up against somebody who really could do, do some yeah, damage. Who would yeah. do anything, basically. Yeah. And that is a really good tip, but only to be used in times of when your back's up against the wall. Yeah. Then, then again, three weeks later, I'm walking along the high street where I lived, and there he is coming the other way. And I thought, oh, him. And I sort of made to put. I was looking in the Lasky's window, you know, like you do. That's yeah, a nice yeah, camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But he saw me and he crossed over and he's coming towards me and I thought, and he went up and he got hold of me quietly and he just went, oh mate, he said, I am so sorry. Yeah. He said, I don't know what came over me. He said, but when I saw you, I just had to hit you. I said, okay, I understand. <laughs> Some people have those faces. I felt the same way myself. And he, uh, anyway, we sort of became friends. I'm not firm friends, but yeah. I saw him around town an awful lot and we nodded and waved and everything. I have two people who I cl call best friends. I mean, you know, I have a lot of close friends. There are two people out of all of them who I'll talk to about anything and I rely on 110% to have my back. And one of them... To have? To have my back. If, if I needed help in something, oh, it one of, whether it was a physical fight or whether it was a legal battle or whether it was a moral dilemma, there are two people in my life that will give me what I consider to be honest, educated advice without having to worry about what they're saying. And I think those, to have those friends in your life is very good and very precious. Um, but one of those guys, we hated each other until we fought, until we had a fight. And after that, the day after, he came around to apologise because it was his instigating through peer pressure through yes. other people. He brought around a packet of cigarettes, not, had the balls to knock on my door on his own, yeah. ask my mum where I was because my mum knew what had happened um, and that was the reason I wasn't out that night. And when I came to the door, he said, look, 
I'm really sorry about last night. You no. didn't deserve it. Here's a pack of fags. Why don't you come out and join us this evening? Think about it. And ever since then, we've been best of friends. There. It's another bit of advice my dad gave me. Was he said, in life, you'll find that the only way you can really be totally top mates with another guy is to either get absolutely legless together sometime or to have a fight with him. Mm. I've got a mate now, and we talk, we talk about actually getting in the ring and having a go. Yeah? Yeah. Don't understand why. But you see it with boxers, don't you? They lo knock the living daylights out of each other, 15, three-minute rounds. And then when they embrace at the end of the fight, there is a genuine love and camaraderie between them that you don't get in football, cricket, rugby, what anybody says. That's right. My brother's a kickboxer. Oh, yeah. Um, and he was in a competition. So if he's 21, 22 now, he would have been 16, so let's say four or five years ago. Um, and he used to go kickboxing training with his best friend who lives across the road from us, uh, mm -hmm. a guy called Sam. Um, and they were in the same tournament together, and they obviously worked their way up the bounce and ended up in the quarterfinals together. Two guys, two lads, 16, both of them. They've grown up together since the age of two, three. They were very, very good friends, lived literally 20 metres away from each other. Knocked the absolute living crap out of each other. I mean, this guy broke my brother's nose, my brother's eyes were watering, my no his nose was bleeding, my brother was going back at him with kicks and punches. I mean, my brother won in the end, I think, because he was slightly more agile and slightly more technically adept, but they didn't half go for it. Mm. They really did. And I couldn't believe it, because me and my dad and my mum were all stood up and we're going, oh no, he's been drawn against Sam, what's this going to be like? And my mum's got hold of my dad's arm going, oh, Robin, they're actually punching each yeah. other, they're meant to be friends. They just went for it, it was great. And of course, afterwards, they went home and talked about buddy, it. Buddy, 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 yeah. They went home and yeah. talked about it, good fight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You see yeah. that punch I got you with? Yeah, well, that really hurt. That's interesting. <laughs> and as men, aren't we fascinated by really hard blokes? <sighs> Occasionally you meet a really, really hard bloke. Yes. And it's fascinating, isn't it? You like yes. being around them because you feel protected. <laughs> there are two close people in my life. One of them I had a fight with and we've been best mates ever since. One of them I've been best mates with since I was four, so over 20 years I've known him and he is... Well hard. Oh yes. Yeah, and not anymore, unfortunately, uh, um, you know, a tainted um, youth, let's say, um, has kind of left him without sight and okay. slightly paranoid, but... Um, Back in his day, yes, he was he was hard, and there were not many people who would want to get in his way. I was at a football match, Chelsea, no, Spurs versus Crystal Palace. Yeah. And uh, Spurs, Crystal Palace beat Spurs. And some of the Spurs fans were leaving. And this uh, Palace fan, big lad, he was still on the terraces, and he was just going, Come on, you glaciers! And this big Spurs fan, walking out past him, heard this, took a front, and he gave him a tremendous smack in the gob, right? And as he, <clears throat> as he took his hand away, he was holding his fist. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Hit it. Right, and then he, ooh, my hand. Right like that. And this big fella, I've forgotten this, he looked down at this Spurs fan and he just went, he's just been smacked as hard as you like yeah. in the face. No defence, because he didn't know it was coming. And he looked at this Spurs fan and he just went, if that's the best you've got, mate, you're not off in trouble. <laughs> oh, how frightening is that? You've just given a guy your best, you know, free shot. See, a lot of the time you can win a fight without even throwing a punch, can't you? Mm, no. Well, yeah, I know what you mean. I've seen it done. Just with menace and with well, yeah. wherewithal. We've and with native intelligence. We were in town handing flyers out for a club gig one night and one guy took offence to the fact that we'd offered him a flyer for a night that was going on just around the corner and decided to start on my friend and the guy's mates were like, what's he doing this for? We've just gone away to a pub, whatever, we don't, we're not interested. And they're going, leave it. And he's going, no, 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 what's your problem? My mate just looked at him and went left to right with his head and it mm. clicked his neck to make <laughs> And he mm -hmm. just pointed in his face and went, you better be good. <laughs> and his mates at that point physically dragged yeah, him yeah. away. Yeah. Um, quick email. Sh are we rent paying or anything, or are we past that or uh, before we're, we're that past or that. prior that? We don't yeah. have to do that. So we, well, I can take this email, which has come in by um, Seamus from Seamus O'Reilly, who says the yogurt knitting, lying, thieving MPs stopped saying global warming when they realised we knew the world was in fact cooling down. Now they say climate change, so it doesn't matter what uh, the weather does. They can say more tax, more tax, you plebs, more tax. He's uh, got himself an agenda, a bit like that guy Patrick Shane, mm. hasn't he? Mm. Yeah. Was, was Patrick a real guy? 
Um, You're not convinced, you see, are you? I'm not convinced. No. Seamus is definitely a real Irish guy. Um, oh, yeah. But Patrick, it's a very good accent, but not convinced. Well, was it? Let's take a call. Uh, 01243556060. Good evening. Good evening, Tommy. It's Victor Kuliganov. Don't Victor. know if you remember me from before. Jean Dobre. Jean Dobre. Yes. If you do, yes, oh, yeah. very good. Thank I you. wanted to ask you a question, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, I know that you are National Union of Journalists. A qualified journalist. No. And I would like to learn more about journalism. I was wondering how to go about it without actually becoming, um, you know, like having to pay for anything or go to college or anything like, like that. How to actually go and uh, well, getting a kind of journalistic rigor like you got. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was, I was lucky enough to spend some time in a cesspool called Fleet Street. Uh -huh. where I cut my teeth. Right. Um, but let me ask you, what, what, what form of journalism do you find attractive or interesting, Victor? Well, I would like to make reportage. 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 That involves... I this word from yes. you, by the way, reportage. Well, a reportage. Reportage involves an element of comment. Right. Un un uh -huh. un unlike what journalists is supposed to do, which is just give you the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Yes, but well, I don't like just the facts. No. You want to be able to add a layer of perception of your own, yes. Exactly, yes. this is what I like to do. Yes. Well, let's take an issue, shall we, and see whether we can garner some facts and then perhaps embroider them with a little bit of perspective. Um, okay. Is there anything that's... Like, yeah, go ahead. I would like maybe then, in this case, to come back to what you say earlier, that, in, that the, uh, the knifing and everything, what is going on, has always been the same um, as now, and now simply more reporting of it. Yes. That you, you, you came with the thesis that uh, we always were in such a bad situation like today, but we had less commentary about it, and that therefore people believe that is worse today than it used to be. In fact, it's not really worse. This is, you put it very beautifully. Thank my, you. My, my views, you put them very beautifully. Better than I could. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for saying this. Um, my opinion is, if this is the case, why do, pop, do the journalists not honestly say so? Because they need... Surely people want to hear what is nice. Ah, uh, no, no. People want to be depressed and, and made to feel concerned. There's an unwritten rule at um, Associated Newspapers, which is one of the big groups of newspapers in the United Kingdom, that you have to somehow annoy, upset or irritate your reader in every article that you write. Really? Yes. People like to be annoyed and mm. they are drawn to bad news, aren't they? Well, surely this is only making them feel bad and unhappy with the newspaper. Yes, Why do they then go back and buy the next one? Because most newspaper readers are too stupid to understand that their own predilection for bad news and doom and gloom is paying a large part in their own general lack of happiness. They don't so realise it. So how can we get to the real statistics, how many people really had knives? Because all I know is that in the olden days, for yeah. example, New York used to be considered a very dangerous place to, to go around. And yeah. nowadays it's much cleaned up thanks to Giuliani, maybe. Maybe not thanks to him, maybe thanks to other people and Giuliani just taking credit. I don't people saying, oh, Giuliani cleaned up New York. So why is it that over there in New York they're not saying, oh, it's worse than ever? when they are saying it's worse than ever in London, for example. There is a difference between American media and British media, of course. Right. As well as there is a difference between British media and all the other various but, media. But why? Why is this the case? Well, you, Britain is a case in point, isn't it? Have you visited this country recently? Well, recently, yes. Two weeks ago I came over here. Yes. Britain is an unusual country, isn't it? Of course, largely because of its simple geography. It is an island. Mm, and so, therefore... So it's America. Sorry? 
so is America, but only much bigger of one an island. Yes, I don't think America, you could ever say that America suffers from the island mentality, although, of course, they did have that extended period of glorious isolation and a foreign policy which was based on not having a foreign policy. This so, was Monroe Doctrine, yes, where, yes. where, where yeah. we said that every nation have the right to stand over a grid and have the, the wind blow their dress up. Something along those lines, yes. Yes. <laughs> Very good. I'm with you. I don't know whether anybody else is up on Norma Jean, but well I, done. I knew you. I knew Very you good. Would, yeah. Would yeah. Get it. Okay. We're both sleep. We're, we're both broadcasting from the knife drawer here, aren't we? If I can keep the, if I can keep the conversation as tight as that, since you obviously can, Victor. Yeah. Okay. Where Where have we got to here? Well, we were we were comparing the U United States media, saying that the Uni the Americans necessarily want to have bad news. They want to be more realistic, maybe than Britain. And we were trying to analyze why that might be, and you said about the island mentality, but I'm still not putting two and two together to make five no. and see why the island mentality makes us in this European part of English-speaking world. So the over there is much more realism. Yeah, I missed a bit of what you said there. Um, I'm sorry. But I was no. just saying that I'm, I'm still not putting two and two together. And making five. So then making five as to why British people being from the islands, they should be more negative about the news or like to read negative news, hmm. whereas the Americans don't like to read so much the negative news. Well, um, there are two countries which have very curious cultures, if you ask me, on planet Earth, and they both are derived from their geographical circumstance, and they are Japan and the United Kingdom, uh -huh. both of which... Well, we Japan is a very interesting country, yes, yeah, very untypical. Yeah, and so is Britain. Less so than Japan, mm. but then the isolation which Japan enjoyed up until the 1600s when the Portuguese finally arrived and brought some new ideas, such as the concept of thank you, because there was no word for thank you in Japan until the Oh, Portu because they say arigato come from Portuguese, doesn't it? From obrigado. Well spotted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that before you told me. It's such fun, isn't it, exchanging trinkets like this. Um, but Japan, as you know, because they were an isolated culture, they, 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 became, they grew up to be very different people from the mainland Asians, which were Chinese and so forth. And, and Britain is the same. It, it's a European country, but very different from the rest of Europe, basically because we haven't had to put up with lots of invasions and lots of different cultures. And for some reason, and I'm not sure if I can make the connection, we do have in Britain a different relationship with violence than the relationship that other countries have with violence. And you only have to see that with the success of our hooligans, who are, let's face it, the best hooligans in the world. I think Victor's dropped off the line. I think he might have done, yes. Right, let's pay some bills, shall we? Oh, gosh, yes. Thank you, Victor. Play Radio UK have teamed up with Virgin Wines to offer you a massive £20 discount off your favourite wines. Visit playradiouk.com forward slash Virgin Wines to start saving now and get your favourite wines delivered to your door. Play Radio UK and Virgin Wines for people who love their wine and a great deal. Playradiouk.com forward slash Virgin Wines. Broadcasting live to the UK. News, information, entertainment, and the best music from the past 40 years. This is Play 2 UK. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Taboo subjects will be discussed and opinions aired. If you're easily offended by an open minded nature of mass debate, then this show is not for you. Hello again, Tommy. Emails Richard Hoddenot. He says, I must confess I didn't catch the start of the programme tonight, so if my point is being covered, sorry. When a ruling body says, if you take drugs, you will never represent your country again, because they want to be seen that they're doing their best to clean up the sport, if any athlete gets caught, he has to accept this, and I hope he, we're talking about Dwayne Chambers, um, Richard of course, loses his case this week. I would be even more upset if he wins his case and he is then able to claim his expenses, etc., from his trip to the Olympics from our athletics board at the expense of a fully clean athlete who had to stay at home. Um, I'll take a 
uh, some refreshment. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. That's very kind of you. Um, <clears throat> we're back to Dwayne Chambers here. Richard Hollinott has uh, raised the subject again. There's something very important to understand about the Olympics, which is this. Can anybody tell me, particularly people who think that Dwayne Chambers should be banned and not allowed to go and represent his country, okay, can anybody tell me when the whole notion of nationhood commandeered the Olympic movement, which began as a celebration of individual athletic ability. And somewhere along the line, between the French guy who kicked it off and what we've got now, it's been turned into a kind of a Eurovision bulging thighs contest, mm. where country matters. And the flag going up the flagpole, and the national anthem, and that bloody medals table, that bloody medals table, which we all turn to first thing every morning, and get pissed off because Taiwan has got a gold, and they're above us in the table because we've only got two silvers, one of them for clay pigeon shooting. We should be celebrating individual athletes doing individual things. And our country shouldn't have any say whatsoever in who goes to the Olympics, because these people are individual athletes. That's right. And OK, so the governing bodies give people a pole if they want to be a <laughs> pole vaulter. Maybe help pay to get them out to Beijing. But Dwayne Chambers would pay his own way if he could, if he'd be allowed to. And why shouldn't he be allowed to? Because he's an individual. And if the Olympic movement says he can run, why can't he run? The British who are saying he can't run. The other week he ran 10 seconds flat. Now that's pretty much a guaranteed bronze at Olympic standard. Why aren't we sending him or do we just want to be seen to be even worse than we already are at the Olympics? I, mean, I think he'd be lucky to we get in the final actually with some of the things that's going on. Have you seen this guy Tyson Gay who does yes. 9.6 something? Yeah, he's only young as well, isn't he? Tyson Gay's 9.6 something and the Jamaicans have just unearthed another <clears throat> 100 metre runner who broke the world record only the sixth time he ever run a competitive 100 metres. Bolt, well. bolt, bolt, bolt. Wow. You know, so, um, and what what medals are we going to get? Apparently, Philip Sadowu reckons he's nailed on for the triple. Yeah, that's the triple about the size joint. of it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty about much the size of it. We've lost the rowing now. Redgrave and Pinson aren't really. I only watched the rowing, though. It's wrong of me, but I only watched the rowing because there were a couple of British guys might get a medal. Yeah. Well, do you watch the rowing any other? Do you watch, do you watch the rowing? You, do you... I have never watched rowing before in my life, apart from that one time when they you come... Even your mate up, don't you? go, oh, oh Dave, time. you're coming round. I've got some beers in the fridge. There's rowing on. <laughs> you don't, do you? You so don't, no. You so don't, do you? you? So... The boxing I can watch. Formula One, boxing, football, I can't stand rugby. No, I mean in the Olympics. I can, oh, watch, Olympics, the, I can right. watch the boxing if there's a little Mexican guy up against, uh, you know, some German. I can watch that. I always like to watch the, um, the uh, floor gymnastics because you get some un unusually strange looking people who have toned their bodies in yeah. weird ways, throwing themselves I into midair. And it's some I of them are fantastic. I can watch the gymnastics as well. Yeah, the Russians. <sighs> Nadia Komanech. But then you see, they we're back to sex, aren't we? Yes. And some of those women sprinters are very distracting. But I come back to my point, and I want to take Richard Hoddinott, whose email from Cleveland's in Lancashire, to task. Because, Richard, you really lost sight of what the Olympics is all about. The Olympics is about individuals. Countries should play no part in the Olympics whatsoever. Baron de Watts his name who started the Olympics off. I don't think he... Was it not started by the Romans? Greeks. Was it the, oh, the Greeks, of course. Yes, and they used to do it nude. Yes, that's right. Nude. Smothered in olive oil, they used to be. Really? Yes, sorry, Bob. Wow. See, there was a lot of sexual tension back then, wasn't there, involved with sports? Oh, those Greeks, oh. they threw some parties. Yeah. Oh, believe you me. Because the other thing about the Greeks, of course, at the time, was that um, they couldn't see any difference between homosexuality and heterosexuality. No, they didn't care. They all they went off. stick it anywhere they could. As they? long as it felt good, yeah. do it, yeah. was the Greeks. But coming back to the Olympics, somewhere along the line, people got hold of the idea that it's an international sport, mm. where... Britain is trying to get more medals than France. And I'd like to be liberated from that, because there are occasions when I want some foreign guy to win, but I almost feel as though I shouldn't say it, in case people think I'm some kind of a traitor. Mm. You know, I don't necessarily want the British guy to win. 
It's the same in the rugby. Well, I don't. I, I often want the Welsh to beat England at rugby because I don't like the Welsh particularly, but the English rugby team are very annoying. Yeah, aren't they? It's full of prima donnas, really, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're a bunch of um, uh, laptop wielding, soon to be executives in merchant banks. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll shut up now. But Richard, I disagree with you totally um, when he says that he would be upset if Dwayne Chambers wins his case. Because I think that, you know, you, you, Richard, that's so cruel. This mm. is what this man lives for. And he cares so much about doing as well as he possibly can that he was prepared to risk his health. Okay, taking illegal drugs, but they're not... Look, look, <clears throat> look, listen to me, Richard, you twit. Do you like the Beatles? Matt, do you like the Beatles? Yeah, well, uh, yes, yes. They're right, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, they're pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. Right. Well, if Dwayne Chambers, right should be banned from running again and have to give his medals back, right? Then the Beatles mm. should be banned from ever singing again and they should be made to give all their gold and platinum records back because they did that on drugs. Along with Amy Winehouse, members of Whitesnake, Absolutely. Lou Lemmy, um, probably Kiss, yes. uh, Rolling Stones, yes. Pink Floyd. And if I was a member of a clean band at the time when the Beatles were, you know, top dog, but doing it all on dope and, mar and LSD and the rest of it. You know, if I'd been Nick Haywood, <laughs> I would be so pissed off. Yeah. Because the Beatles definitely improved their music through the use of drugs. True yeah. or false? True. True, is it fact? Sergeant Peppers was an acid-inspired album and one of the best albums you'll ever hear. Absolutely. So maybe if they hadn't been using those drugs, they'd have been no better than Nick Haywood. That's ridiculous, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but you see my point. <clears throat> But thank you anyway for your email, Richard Hoddinott. Uh, going back to your point about being scared to say that you don't want to support the Englishman because it's unpatriotic. Mm. Andy Murray was interviewed before we got kicked or we lost in the Euro 2008 qualifiers. Yes. And um, he said, if you know, so Scotland aren't in, but if England get through, you know, who will you be supporting? Mm. Or, or they didn't say anything. They said basically in Euro 2008, who will you be supporting? And he said, whoever England are playing. And there was uproar. Yeah. There was absolute uproar. Because, of course, Andy Murray's English, isn't he? He's Scottish. Yes. If I was Scottish, I would be supporting whoever England were playing. Not because I hate England, but because it's part of the whole... Well, it is for the thing, Scots. It? Yes, and for the Welsh. But, but they berated him and they went on at him for saying that. I mean, I even heard the commentators at Wimbledon when he was playing said, all oh, the crowd, they're a bit quiet tonight. They're used not as behind Murray as they usually are, probably no. because of his comments about England in Euro 2000. I thought, what a load no, There of is an element of that. No, that. Well, that's the Wimbledon crowd for you. Yep. The Wim Wimbledon crowd. As soon as he played a good shot that no one expected him to get, they were on their feet going, yeah, go Murray. It was hard for the Wimbledon crowd to decide whether or not they liked Andy Murray. And I think when they realised that, frankly, he's not good enough to win Wimbledon and never will... Not while Nadal and Federer are there. ...then we might as well remember that he once said that he'd rather Germany won than England, and we don't really like him all that much. But why not? If, if, if England weren't in the Euros and Scotland were, and somebody said to me, who will you be supporting? I would say, I would perhaps might not say whoever Scotland are playing, but I wouldn't be supporting Scotland. No. And that's not because I don't like Scotland or Scottish people, it's because I'm English and it's England-Scotland in the do football you feel, the competition. Do you feel good when England win a football match or a cricket match or a rugby yes. match? Or Lewis Hamilton wins the Formula One? I felt amazing when that But happened. why? It's a complete accident that you have any affiliation for him. Why should well, you I think be with Lewis Hamilton I was glad because I spent 500 quid going there. Yeah, but why was it better for you that an Englishman won? Oh, it's a hard I question. I think because in, you know, in Formula One, when was the last time we had an English world champion winner? But why does it matter that they're English? No, you, you make a good point. And yet it does. Yeah. So I get out of it. Can I give you an argument there? I get out of it like this. I say, it's because when an Englishman or an English team triumph, okay, it keeps life as interesting as possible around here. Mm. Because people talk about it in the office. They talk about it on the radio, they write about it in an excited way in the press, so it makes my life more interesting. If England had been at the Euro 2008, then this country would have been a more interesting place. It would, and everybody would love each other. Well... No, you know, in the aftermath, been, they'd parade the... If they won the cup, they'd parade it through London and... Those bloody flags flying from white vans at 7 yep. o'clock in the morning and... And, and men trying to get home in time for the kickoff at five o'clock, yep. you know, and all that excitement thing. Can I get home? And oh, are they? And is um, is somebody's metatarsal going to be mended in time? 
01243 Hello? 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 Oh. Oh, must be something wrong with their phone. Strange. I picked the phone up at another radio station not long ago and somebody was trying to sell me double glazing. It was fantastic. I did that when I was working at Rugby FM during a song I took a call someone trying to sell me a kitchen. <laughs> um, so I, I rang them back during the next call and said that yes I would love to buy one of your kitchens but you must understand that I live on a reconditioned submarine and I'll only be in harbour for 48 hours. Will you be able to put uh, all these buoyancy control devices and stuff? Had them for about five minutes before they hung up. But it was worth bothering them after they bothered me. You, um, you'd rehearse that one. That's a nice one. I like that one. That's good. That's good. It's a true story. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying it's not a true story. It's a nice line to have up your sleeve, isn't it? Um, I never, I want to be rude often to the cold callers, but you know it's just some kid who's working his way through university, yeah. or some poor kid in Calcutta who, you know, you can't be rude. No. My wife is so polite. In fact, if I rang her tonight and pretended to be a cold caller, I'm not going to do this. No, I wouldn't. She, it's quarter past eleven, but she'd be so polite. She would. I listen to her saying, so, thank you ever so much for your call. She's such a nice lady. Thank you. And, and that's, a lo that's a really nice offer. Oh, yes, yes. But it just so happens that we've just had some double glazing already put into all our windows. Isn't that nice? Yes, but the person on the other side of the phone will put the phone down and feel good for a change about what they're doing. Yeah. And Mine. they won't feel like crap. They won't, might not feel the next day they've got to drag themselves out of bed and annoy a hundred people just so that they can scratch a living. Do you know what I read? John Prescott, who you would think was the most thick-skinned man out, wouldn't you? He so fears rejection, which is what we're talking about here. Mm. You ever tried cold calling? Yeah. It's painful, isn't it? It is painful. I left after my first half day. It, it just screws you up being told to off and no and go away and don't ever ring me again. How did you get this number? All that shite. Yep. John Prescott, you think there's the thickest skinned man on earth. He so fears rejection, he will never go to a restaurant unless he's booked. Really? Because he's terrified of being turned away. Just, we haven't got any space Being tables. told, I'm terribly sorry, so we don't have any tables. <clears throat> that would cripple him. So he never puts himself at risk of being told that. But would it cripple him because he's scared of rejection? Would it cripple him because everyone suddenly go, Ha! John Prescott couldn't get a table in a restaurant! I sympathise with him because not long ago I was walking past the hairdressers and I had a spare half hour and I thought I'd get a trim. And I went in and said, um, any chance for a quick trim? And the woman went, no. And I just stood there in the middle of the hairdressers. I, I crushed. <laughs> I've just gone, oh, all right. No, I was crushed. Out. I was crushed. Hello, you've come to through to play radio. May I pleasure your wife? I doubt it, actually. Mm. I doubt it. No. If you're asking the question, generally, no. Well, it would have helped, first of all, if they'd have given us a name, vital statistics, and where they were, roughly. Pleasure your wife. I wouldn't mind. I quite like my wife to have as much pleasure as she can. If somebody was genuinely able to pleasure my wife, then I wouldn't stand in his or her way. No. Or her way, isn't that my? I don't like that. Isn't that like that? Give it a girl on girl action. This from Joey in Clacton on Sea. Nice to hear a decent argument. Uh, he says or she says, glad to hear Tommy back. James has made a great addition to your station. Hope you're enjoying tonight, Matt. I hope you learn a lot from Tommy. Jerry from Clacton on Sea. I'm one of your hyper downloaders. I tend to download and listen to nearly all the programmes you podcast, which is nice. I'm not sure whether it's nice to be seen as some sort of a sage, though. Because mm. I'm still learning myself. Yes. I mean, well, the thing is, you well, have to, don't you? I spent three months in your company before Christmas, in didn't my I? Company. You know, watching how you did things and stuff. And without that three months, would definitely not have had the cheek, let's say, to say yes, I'll carry on. The nerve! No, you did a good job. You're doing a great job. I know that for a fact. But then again, it's not difficult, is it? Because all you have to be is um, self-aware mm -hmm. and reasonably open and honest, and have a decent heart. 
and also be able to say bollocks. Yes. On the radio, when, well, on the air when it comes to it, which is one of the things you can't say on commercial radio. Are we playing the rent? We are playing the rent. Beautiful. It's uh, 11.20 in the UK if you're listening live. And if you're listening around the world, good day. Or on the podcast, good day too. Play to UK. Headlines. The oldest son of the Back from the Dead canoeist says his world was crushed when he was told of his father's death. Mark Darwin and his brother Anthony have been giving evidence against their mother, Anne. She denies all charges against her. A suspect in the Madeleine McCann case has settled a libel bid over newspaper claims he was involved in her disappearance. A number of British papers are thought to have agreed to pay Robert Murat a total of half a million pounds. Soaring bills for petrol and food are being blamed for rocketing inflation. The latest figures show it's shot up to 3.8%. And British Airways is warning passengers will have to deal with higher fares and fewer flights. Chief Executive Willie Walsh says price rises are absolutely inevitable because of the economic climate. Place in UK weather. And here is the weather this evening and tonight. Light rain continuing southeastwards overnight, perhaps turning moderate as it clears Kent later. The rest of the UK will see clear spells developing with rain or showers in the northwest. Wednesday, which is tomorrow, unless you're listening on the podcast, is dry and sunny in the south of England this is, and near the east coast, but turning cloudy later. Elsewhere, cloud and rain will gradually spread eastwards to affect the rest of the UK. You're up to date on Play 2 UK. If you want to increase your profits, go the extra mile for your customers, and bring loyalty to your business, then you need Play in Store. In-house or online, Play in Store is your personal, made-to-measure music and marketing tool. Using the latest technologies, you can create your own tailor-made music and messaging service, which until now has been unaffordable to everyone but the biggest businesses. Get more from your business by creating your own radio station. Go to playinstore.co.uk. Missed anything? Hello, this is Chris Tarrant. Hello there, this is Sean Williamson. James Whale. If you speak to me like that again, I'll put you over my knee and spank you. Not the Tommy Boyd Show. Have you ever been contacted by the Biavians? No, I've, um, had a few close brushes with your owners. Hello, this is Chris Tarrant. If you're hearing this now, you've missed me on Hertz's half hour. But don't worry, you can listen again at playradiouk.com slash podcast playradiouk.com slash podcast missed anything then go to playradiouk.com slash podcast this is the tommy boyd show on play radio uk do you think there are men it will mostly be men who do actually listen very carefully to the shipping forecast or is it just something that the bbc thinks that it has to keep doing because otherwise somebody will complain and they can't have that i think there's an element of both but you would like to think that if you were on a ship that somebody might have taken into consideration a shipping forecast. Haven't they got their own sort of machinery for getting the no, weather? Yeah, Met Office radars and. All do they not? Ha can they not? Can they not go on the bloody internet? I don't know. Can they go? Can they? Do they have the internet on a ship? Um, I presume so. With GPS, yeah, or GPRS, or whatever they call it. I presume, yeah, the in yeah, of course, yeah, the internet's perfectly. You get satellite phones and stuff, don't you? Have you seen that recruitment ad for the Royal Navy? Which one? Oh, well, it, he's on a submarine. And he's the IT guy on the submarine, right? And it's a trident, right? Yeah. Which means it's got uh, about 18 intercontinental ballistic missiles yeah, on yeah, it, yeah. which would take out, you know, most of China and yeah. Russia. And he goes, um, he goes, uh, oh, yeah, he said, I have to come out any hour of the day if one of the computers goes down. Sometimes they all go down. <laughs> you think, right? <laughs> and then he goes... And what I usually do is I just switch him off and switch him on again. <laughs> so he's got all these intercontinental ballistic missiles, which I presume are controlled by computers. Yes, we do. Are they not? Well, yeah, you think? think so. And he's rebooting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what you do with any computer problem, first of all. It's reboot. Switch, reboot, yeah. yeah. You know, restart. Boom. Yeah. And it usually works, doesn't it? Why is that? You're young. You should know. Why do computers work again if you reboot them? Um, 
as, as far as I'm concerned with computers, yes. if it's on the screen and it's doing what I want it to do, it's working. Yes. If not, I reboot it. Yes. I don't know why I reboot it. I don't know what that does. But it but works. But it works again. I know. And I presume what it, it clogs up its own memory and its own processing power and stops because it's trying to do too much at once and just needs starting again, you know, patting on the back and saying, it's all right, you can do this. Yes. It's not a problem. Here, I sit down, have a minute, have a cup of tea. Start again, you'll see how clear it all can be. That's very spiritual of you. I, I suspect there's something more to do with circuits and uh, hard drives and various things. Yeah, it's all processing power and stuff. It's all bottled. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's bottled. It's all for, for a short man with glasses. Richard Hoodenut gets back to me after I lambasted him. It's a good word, isn't it? You pronounce it lambasted? Or? Well, it just sounds better, doesn't it? Lambasted. It sounds lamb like Sunday lunch. Well, it's, it's what it is. That's what the phrase is. Lambasted something. You put sort of, you know, really cover it in scalding grease. <clears throat> he says, no, the argument about Beatles is bollocks, as nobody has said you cannot take drugs and compose music and sell the records. Well, the law has, cocker! The bloody law says you can't smoke dope and LSD! The law says you can't take drugs and do anything, right? You can't drive a car, you can't do brain surgery, you can't take your daughter for a walk round the park, you certainly can't email an intelligent internet radio station on drugs. The law says so. The law, Richard. The law. The law. Number 47, Matt. Oops. The, the law. The law. So when Richard says, nobody has said, you cannot take drugs and compose music, he is A, right... B, wrong. C, don't know, Matt. I'll go for B, Tom. Go for B. B. And, I think... the buzzers. And you won the washing machine. Now, do you want to go on <laughs> and go for the holiday? Gamble, gamble, gamble. Go for the holiday? I'll go for the holiday. Go for the holiday. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> Richard says, I am not a prat, which is unfair of you, but someone who has his own views. Did I call him a prat? I don't know. I can't... A, yes. B, no. C, perhaps I should have. A, B, or C. For the holiday. For the holiday. <laughs> for the holiday. What should I do? All In the Maldives. I'm going for C. C perhaps you should C. have. Go for C. <laughs> so, cheers, Tommy says. I still think you're a brilliant argumentarian. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Now, how far is his tongue up my... No, I don't care. <laughs> well, the thing is... Is it Steroids a? aren't illegal, are they? They're just... Sorry? Steroids aren't illegal. They're just illegal in sport. Um, I, I, I believe you're right. I think yeah. you can buy human growth hormone yep. on the internet. So... But then you can probably buy a nuclear missile on the internet as well, so... You could probably make one if you found the right instructions on That'll the internet. That'll happen. Yeah. That'll happen. And I've got this doomsday scenario, okay, where a group of streamlined taxi drivers get hold of a device. <laughs> <laughs> Three of them. The ones who wait outside Barnum. You know the ones I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Those guys. Yeah, streamline. Yeah. Why are all taxi firms called streamline? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't anything else. There's a lot, I've always noticed with my travels up and down You go to any, any country, any city, any village, and the taxi firm's called Streamline. There's a lot of Helen's taxis around this country. Oh, there? really? Yeah, I noticed that. Up and down. I don't know. I just noticed Helen's taxis. And there's also yeah, a number of companies that have called themselves Aardvark. And that's mm. because they'll be first in the yellow pages. Oh, really? Yes. Isn't that ridiculous? Well, it is ridiculous because you look up yeah. the yellow page, you don't exactly. read through no. it from beginning to end. Exactly. You look for the company you, you want. You look for one near you. Why yeah. do you do that? I look for one near me. If I want a plumber, I look for the one nearest me. Mm. Why? This is petrol. Why don't I get someone from <laughs> Waterlooville? I don't. I look to see if there's anybody in Chichester. I can't have him. Well, now, when it comes to building, plumbing and maintenance work on yes. your house, it's always better to go with someone you know no. who's done work for a friend who's trusted, reliable, right. or cheap, or a good price. This is a really good two-second story, OK? Mm -hmm. uh, we got a business line put into the house about four or five years ago, and it was one of those sexy numbers. It was five double three four double three. Yeah, so you can hear it, can't you? Yeah. yeah. OK, call us now on five double three four double three. Two eight two eight two eight two eight two eight two eight. It's one of those. Right. I paid a little bit extra for it, not a lot. And in it went, I was just about to attach this business scheme to it, when the phone rang. See? Brr, brr. I said, hello. She said, is that Coal Harbour? I said, no, I'm sorry, you got the wrong number. That's what I've been down. No joke. Half an hour later, phone. 
Is it Cold Harbour? I said, so who do you want? He said, the roofing specialists. I said, no, no. I said, we're, um, we are a, a media organisation. So, oh, OK. Anyway, cut a short story long. What had happened was this company, a roofing specialist based out of Portsmouth, right, had got themselves a number of sexy numbers around the area on the basis that people would only call their own area. Right. So 01243 533 433, right, had been their phone number, but it was directed through to the Portsmouth office. Mm -hmm. But they decided it wasn't working, that scheme. So they got rid of the 533 433 number, but it was still in the yellow pages. Ah. So I had endless calls on this phone. I phoned BT and said, this number's screwing me, because every time I pick the phone up, it's somebody who wants their tiles checked. Well. Anyway, it's went on and on. And at one point, I thought about getting in touch with a builder and saying, would you like me to farm you some free business, mate? Because I'm getting all these calls from people who want their roofs checked, OK? And you won't be paying for the advertising because somebody's taken out a two grand ad in yellow pages yeah, and, left, sure. and left the wrong number in. Anyway, one of those mini hurricanes about four or five years ago, I got a phone call. Oh, yes, hello. I wonder if you could help me. I'm going away for a week to my grandchildren's christening. And the rain is flooding in through my extension. And I said, where do you live? She said, I don't live in Celsius. I said, you know what I did? What? I got my car. Yeah? And I went round. You did it yourself? Yeah. She had a flat roof extension, and there was a puddle building up on it, and it was blowing a gale, and it was forcing its way through all the little sort of sheets of um, rubberized tarpaulin yeah, yeah. that they put on flat roof extensions. There was a gap. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go to the old um, uh, home base. And I'm going to pick up a big tin of rubber paint. You know rubber paint? You yeah. can get that. It's fantastic stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I came back, and I'm painting it on, you see, like that. And she said to me, I'm terribly sorry, she said, but I've made a phone call. You're not a roofer, are you? I don't know how she worked it out. Mm. There was a reason. I can't remember it. But I said, no, I'm not. She said, why are you doing this? I said, well... I just felt sorry for you, love. <laughs> you needed help. <laughs> you needed help. And you were in distress, and I'm a hairy man, and I could. And so I did. Anyway, it got resolved, and I went, and I didn't charge her anything. No. But bottom line is, she was still worried. She'd had her roof fixed, free of charge, but she still thought there was something odd about it. I think part of it was that she couldn't believe, and I'm not a magnificent man, I'm not holding myself up as being some kind of, you know... Jesus like character. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I did it and you'd have done it, wouldn't you? She was really in distress. I, I perhaps wouldn't have taken the same route as you, but I would have said, Yes, don't worry, give me your address, we'll get someone out to you and then I'd have okay. phoned somebody. Yeah. I uh, luckily know a lot of people in the trade, so I might have well phoned someone one of my friends and they might have been able to do it. How do we get onto that? Through phones. Phone numbers. Yes, your phone number and um, <laughs> building trades. Um, mm. uh, finding somebody you know through finding yellow somebody pages. you know through yellow pages. Yeah. Aardvark, Helens, streamline, streamline. <laughs> Three nuclear taxi devices drivers taking over the world. <laughs> nuclear device. Uh, Mark in Derby says, "Thank you for sharing your experiences of journalism. What you're saying is starting to make sense, and it works. Ever th since things seemingly." seem to be going wrong in this country. I found myself watching more news to keep tabs on what's going on. Take a quick call. Hello, you're on Play Radio. Hello. Hello. Hiya, it's Richard Hoddinat here. Ha ha, Richard. I don't know if I'm brave, stupid or insane, Paul. I, you know what? Uh, I think <laughs> see, fair see. enough. <laughs> see. <laughs> well, uh, your point about uh, the drugs. What if I was Dutch? Where well, you are allowed to take drugs. So if I was an artiste writing in Holland, how would that apply to your argument? All I'm saying is that is that people should be allowed to do what they want to do. Let people yeah. be free. Oh, right, you got you well, to do got what they want to do. Rules if you're trying to compete on an even platform, though, haven't you? Really? Well, is is it an even platform? There are people in Biafra who haven't got enough food. They ain't going to be going to the Olympics. That's not fair. That's oh, not a level really? playing field, is it? Well, if they're not going, the, they can't compete. So we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't say that the Olympics is an absolutely fair thing. And so oh, not no, only is that. nobody taking drugs, but everybody's being fed enough so that they can run as fast as they might. And whilst that ain't the case, then it is unfair. So there's unfairness going on. 
do we say then do we go to the other extreme and say take as many drugs or don't have drug tests at all then? I think we should have a dirty Olympics. What's wrong with that? Be more fun than the clean one. Well, it'd be different, I suppose. Yeah. Super well, Olympics. Well, and until the, uh, that day happens, we have to have certain rules, I presume. We don't have to have certain rules. I hate the idea that we have to have certain rules. You went to Sunday school, didn't you? Did I bother? <laughs> Where'd you get this idea that we have to have rules, then? Get rid well, of that know. idea. Throw it away. She should bollocks to that idea we have to have rules. Let people no, be free. Rules. No, let people be free. <laughs> let people create, create, create their own moral code. It'd be nice, but it doesn't work like that, does it? That's it will do in like the future. Those, nobody has to have rules. It bloody will, will do in the future. It's coming, mate. Anarchy is coming. I it's hope a wonderful it's so. Thing. Well, people like James right. Well wouldn't have been sacked if there wasn't the rules, though, would they? <laughs> Um, well, I don't know, because I, I don't know the ins and outs of that, and they, I haven't seen James since, so I don't know the, uh, the <laughs> truth about that, nor do you. And, well, prob no, and well. probably nor does he. But anyway. <laughs> he probably told him to fuck off at some anyway. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? But no, look, look, look well, this idea that this country can stop a man going to the Olympics, that's crap too, because the Olympics is not about which country you're representing. Athletes go to the Olympics... To represent themselves, yeah, to, but as I, individuals, I, yeah, it's but been hijacked. Want, uh, so a uh, limit on how many go. It's been and hijacked. Like the best from so many countries, and that's the fairest way they thought of doing it. No, that's crap. You get people turning up at the Olympics who've got no bloody chance. Oh, Eddie the Eagle, but funny. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but funny. he was the best we had. <laughs> he was the best we had, and he shouldn't have been there, but we're glad he was. Yeah, but this Olympics ever then? <laughs> well, it was all right, but the the, yeah. I, the idea. That, that the Olympics is somehow some kind of international sport, Britain versus France, USA versus Russia, China versus everybody else, is the thing that's damaging the Olympics more than drugs. Of course it is. I want to cheer for the best athlete, the one that I admire most, like that Australian Aboriginal 400 metre runner, Cathy What's-Her-Face. She was magnificent. Yeah. But there was a British girl in the event, and so somehow I had to be cheering for Laura, because she's yeah, from the I'll same part of the world as me. How ridiculous is that? Yeah, but uh, I must say, though, if uh, the best person in the world was from Scotland, I wouldn't vote, I wouldn't cheer for him, though. <laughs> That's well, just my opinion. I know, but that's <laughs> shallow. And that, that's that's shallow. It's not shallow. It's not because you don't like Scotland or you don't like Scottish. It's because it go dates back hundreds and hundreds of years that the English and the Scots will have competition against each other. And it's good. It's healthy competition. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't mean that the English hate the Scots or the Scots hate the English. It just means that we'd rather see the other lose. Swanupmanship. And it's good for oh, them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with Do you that. include war in this competitiveness? No. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, all, no, all we're, war, we're all together when it comes to that. All it? war is based on the same misconception that international sport is based on, and that is nationalism. That, that we three are somehow brethren because we're all English. And if there was a Chinese person in the conversation, somehow he or she would be out of our little group. And, and that is the reason why there have been so many wars and the reason why when we start recognising that that's bollocks is why we might be heading towards a more peaceful planet. I... See that? Religion starts more wars than... No, I think, doesn't. yeah, religion and politicians... Are oh, really. guys, don't lazy stuff. When was the last war started by religion? Oh, come on. Give me one. Oh. When was the last one? Um, last the, one. the... Wait, the... Sorry, no, hang on. Come uh, on, there's one. There. Anyone. I, I'm not great with history, so I can't, like... Well, give you're not entitled to an opinion about it, then, are you, you twit? Well, I'm. Is, what's the free country? No, right? you're not allowed to express any old opinion, mate. You have to have some facts. Before you're allowed to express an opinion, you must first of all research the subject that you're going to have an opinion on. Then you must be good enough to understand weighty from less than weighty information. And thirdly, you must be absolutely sure that in expressing your view, you're going to do more good than harm. Otherwise, shut the f*** up. <laughs> now, that goes for you as well, Richard, all right? Thank you very much, anyway. Not at all. <laughs> at, least <laughs> at least I was brave enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, fair play to you, because a lot of people wouldn't have called in. All right, cheers, my man. All the best to you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. Yeah, he's got some balls, actually. Yeah. But then I think he enjoyed that. It's only a friendly argument, isn't it? That's all, that's, all, that's, all, yeah, that's all right. That's all it ever is, isn't it? Um, yeah. Mark in Derby. Um, 
Thank you for sharing your experiences on journalism. Now I know how it works. I'll be looking at certain stories differently and watching and reading the, the news less. Good. There are a lot of news junkies in this country. I used I used to be quite a news junkie, actually. Yeah. Like, up until about a year ago, when I just got sick yeah. of the news, and now I avoid it at all costs. Yeah. Although, I listen to Five Live when I finish the shows late at night, mm. because... It's better than anything else that's on at that time of night. Yeah, well, that's that's more to do with the state of British broadcasting it than, is, yeah. than the quality no, of the news that you're getting. Bad. It makes you feel sad. It makes you worry. And I know. It, makes, it makes you not just worry about yourself. It makes you worry about all your family, all your friends, your your company, where you work, yeah. your bank, um, your driving license. You know who most journalists are? Remember when you were at school, there was that little contorted lad who nobody really liked but he'd go around starting rumours, say that the physics teacher was a gay. Yeah. That sort of lad. Yeah. He's a journalist now. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Power of salacious gossip. Yes. Intrusive information. Take note, Peter Chapman. Mark and Darby continues. Anyway, I've enjoyed listening to the show tonight and hearing your perspectives on things, although I still disagree on some things, but you've shown me a different side of how to look at things. I was oblivious to how journalists worked previously. Hurrah! Seamus O'Reilly is not going to let things go. <clears throat> he signed this one, James Whale. I'll take a phone call. And do we have to pay the rent? Uh, we do after this. After call. this call. Good oh. evening. Thank you for calling Play Radio. I've got you now, Mr. Boyd. You there. have contradicted yourself. Are you ready for this? Come on then. Right. Not two hours ago, not you were hours. advocating a world police force in order to keep control. Not ten minutes ago, yes. were you advocating anarchy and there should be no rules? Yes. That's you have contradicted yourself. You are incorrect. No, you, uh -huh. you don't understand the fact that any journey, whether it is a thousand miles or a first step, um, is a transition. What? And we are making our way towards a world without laws or police via a world where there is justice. Well, an obscure metaphor, answer the point that you once advocated in this show to have a world police force and then not 20 minutes later advocated that there would there should be no rules. Now, eventually, we'll be, eventually there will be no rules. See, I'll tell you how it works. It works like this. It really pisses me off that in this country, if a guy, right, is beating on his wife and his kids, right, the police, yeah. the police go in, don't they? And I that, think you're trying to change the subject by bringing in emotive uh, pictures into people's heads. I would like you to explain why you have advocated that there should be a world police force and then no rules. Earlier on the show, Matt and I were saying that sometimes it's nice to have a fight with a guy, a physical fight, and punch his face in, and then at the end of it you end up friends. But in your case, I'm not sure whether that is what would happen. <laughs> I think you just end up looking like a blamange. You and, and I would explain and I, your point. And I'd walk away. And I uh, would leave you there, I would leave you for the rodents. Well, if you're walking away from this, that yeah. means I am right and you are wrong. Go away. Just no, don't... No, because you're wrong. You're just, wrong. No, no, hang, well, hang on. Hang on. Because you've got, you, you've got to get the, the terminology and the exact wording into context here. When I asked Tom, what do you think about Iran? Should we invade Iran? Um, because they just want to have nuclear power and all that kind of stuff. And Tom asked about Iraq, etc., etc. Um, and he said, it's good that we have some sort of world police force, which basically means stopping us from imploding on ourselves. And what he said about... What he, no, what he, said, what he said about anarchy was he said that I believe that we are heading towards anarchy in this country. What has that got to do with it? Are you drunk? What? I don't drink. I'm a strict Muslim. Well, you should drink. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You bloody should drink. Because you've if, you if those guys... You've yourself and you are now trying to change the subject as listen, per usual. Listen, if those guys, right... Had taken off, and when the trolley dolly came past, they went, sod this for a game of soldiers, how about a gin and tonic? 
I guess defer- you're still not answering my initial I'm just saying, point. I'm just saying about we need a new religion besides well, a new political party. Yeah, well, we know what that religion is. Islam light. Yes. Do you remember that? It's old ground. But you still are wrong. No, what I'm saying is, shut up, what I'm saying is that eventually we will wor- live in a world without rules, but for the time being, we do need oh. somebody with a big stick oh, that's to go very around poor. and beat the crap out of people we don't like, such as Robert Mugabe. Very See, poor. That's, that's what's poor. You, no, you've got to intervene, in because there is a type of ba- you know, nasty anarchy in Zimbabwe, but I'm talking about good anarchy, as, as but, evinced by Emma Goldman. Uh, no, I'm, I'm concerned yes. that you have not researched this Are you an estate to agent? the full extent. Are you an estate agent? <laughs> a bad one. He can't sell any houses at the minute. I'm oh. a poor estate agent. But and that's a poor estate agent it. is a poor estate agent. I will leave you with this thought. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. <laughs> PowerPoint. Go away. Right, right. pay the bills. Estate agents are banned. Sunday night just got better on Play 2 UK. Hello, you're listening to Stephen Grant here with Richard Hershey, except not right now because I've already recorded it. However, if you wanted to hear what it sounded like, you can due to the magic of technology. Playradiouk.com slash podcast. It'll include me, it'll include Richard. The songs I picked, which are pretty good actually, if I say so myself, and all the funny things I said. Some of them contentious, some of them slightly appalling, and most of them offensive. Go on, click, you know you want to. It's not dirty, it's not porn, but it is worth listening to Hershey's Half Hour 30 minutes of top flight entertainment expertly crammed into two hours Sundays from four on Play 2 UK Are everyday items stretching your family income to the limits at the moment? Me too Well I found this amazing website comparison-plus.co.uk It's amazing You can compare the prices of thousands of products from all the big retailers and what's more it's a totally free service You don't have to become a member to use Comparison Plus, but if you do register with comparison-plus.co.uk, you get cashback rewards, giving you even bigger savings. Don't pay over the odds. Click comparison-plus.co.uk and start saving now. This is the Tommy Boyd Show on Play Radio UK. Now, all it was was I was looking around a flat once and the estate agent showed me around. He didn't say anything at all. He just, he just went, um, main living room, PowerPoint, PowerPoint, <laughs> PowerPoint. And then we went to the bedroom, and he went, bedroom one, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. And I, I, I couldn't understand it. It's funny you say that, actually, because... It, w- PowerPoint? When I looked at the flat when I moved down here to the south coast with my yeah. parents, and, and, and the same thing is... Um, Eight years ago, ten years ago, when my parents extended my bedroom, the main thing to me was yeah. how many PowerPoints, PowerPoints there were. were. When they extended the bedroom, I said, we must have this many PowerPoints. I had, a mate, here, here, yeah. here. I had a mate who worked for a building society, and I mentioned it to him. He wasn't a estate agent, but he said, well, he said, often what they're doing is they're giving you uh, an indication of the possibilities. Yes. So when he says PowerPoint, 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 you're thinking, hi-fi. Yeah. Water bed. Yeah. Tally. Refrigerator. Yep. In the bedroom, by the bed. Yep. That's what I always wanted. Never got that as a young oh, you single one. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah. They hum, don't they? Um, mm. they, they... Eventually, yes. They, it's a tiny little... It's like dimmer switches. <clears throat> don't remind me, please. It you, drove me insane you for get, months before You get a dimmer switch, you think, you think, that's going to be sexy. Yeah. I'll be able to say, yeah, I'd like to come in here. Just sit on the bed. Yeah. And I'll just adjust the lighting. And you want, you know, Lionel Richie to kick in. Yeah. And you just turn the lighting down, your dimmer switch. And it starts going, the more you turn it down, like, <laughs> and you think, that's and of course, the, very sexy. The only thing is you brush by them and suddenly the lights... <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of emails, thanks to everybody. Good to hear Tommy Boyd of the Honest Party on Play Radio. This is from Dave C. Thank you for that. Dan. The Honest Party. Yeah. I think all foreigners should be sent back to their own countries. Tommy Boy banged to rights, shafted by an estate agent. Have you been drinking, Tommy? This is from JP. Yes, of course. Thank you for that. Well, that's just about all we've got time for this evening. There's a couple of moments left. A couple uh, of moments? What? That's your couple of moments. Jeez. 
Ten, ten minutes for me. <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> Do you know, I'll tell you what I find about uh, uh, broadcasting in general. It's an important tip. Um, doing seven seconds is a lot more difficult than doing seven minutes. Yes, it is. Which is a lot more yeah. difficult than doing two hours. Yeah. I used to do some continu oh, continuity. There's a thing called children's ITV, where you sit in a kind of a broom cupboard and you're constantly introducing, you know, Rod Hull and Emu and Nightmare and Children's Ward and all that kind of thing. And sometimes your link durations were seven seconds. And you've got 25 minutes to think of it. Mm -hmm. and it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Because in that seven seconds, you've yeah. got to get out of one thing into and then plausibly get yeah. into another at the same time as looking good. Whereas if you had two hours, you wouldn't need it. You just, no, you just oh, that was this, talk for two hours, out. and then just before the end of it, you go, oh, by the way, that's, here's this. That's it. But when it's seven seconds, you find yourself going, Nightmare returns at the same time next week. Coming up after the break, another of Sooty's Amazing Adventures. And then you sit there and That's think, one of your exact lines as well. Isn't it? Yeah, and you sit there and you think, no, not adventures, escapades, series of mishaps. Sooty never had an escapade. No. Episode? Not really. You think you, you think all these things? You wouldn't want to say mishap in this day and age. That's no, politically no. incorrect. Was that a mishap? Was yeah. that? Sooty wouldn't have a mishap. Would What's it? a mishap? Is it? Well, it's a menopause. A, a wrongdoing. A menopause. I don't know. Is it a menstruation? <laughs> what is a mishap? I don't know. Where did that word ever come from? So, this, I was introducing Rod Hull and Emu, see, right? And, uh, I told you this one. This is funny. No, I think so. You sure? Yeah. Right, so I'm introducing Rod Hull and Emu. It's children's ITV, audience 4.5 million. You don't get that anymore. It's only 400,000 people watch Blue Peter. Do you know that? Yeah, it's crap. Children's television's dead. I played Thanks my part. the pop. Teletubbies. I'll say, I played my part. <laughs> anyway. So I'm introducing Rod Hull and Emu. And I see on my uh, information document thing that it's Rod Hull, and the episode is called The Great... Now, how would you pronounce this word? F-A-K-I-R. Well... What is an F-A-K-I-R? What is an F-A-K-I-R? Mm. I'm not too sure. I pronounce it Fakir. Yeah, but what is a Fakir? He's an Indian magician. Oh, right. Flying carpets. <clears throat> yeah. Rope trick. Snake charming. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I introduced it like that. I said, it's time now for Rod Hull, Emu, and today, the great Fakir. No problem there? Mm. I'm flying. However, Rod Hull, no longer with us. Yeah. It was one all, Rod. Do you know what happened to him? No. Do you know Rod Hull? No. Uh, no, well, no, no, Rod Hull and Emu, I grew up with Rod But you know how he you. died? No, I don't know how he died. He went up on his roof because he couldn't get a decent satellite That's picture. Right, yes, England versus that wasn't Poland. Too long ago, was it? England versus Poland. He, it was grainy, so he went up to adjust his sky dish. Yeah, whoosh, yeah. Down. I do remember that. So I always, whenever I think of Rod Hull, I always shout up to heaven. Ended one all, mate. <laughs> anyway, so I'm watching Rod Hull, who's an Australian, and he's finishing his episode, and he keeps mispronouncing the word fake here. And he keeps calling him a Fakir, which is, isn't it? It's borderline. Isn't it? If you say another word afterwards, it would be deemed well, as something completely different. Somebody once said to me when I was interviewing them, uh, my name is Tom, whatever you do, don't call me Tom. I thought, what? <laughs> I, 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 was, I was hamstrung. I couldn't interview him. I, I, I was completely kind of, what? What? <laughs> what? So... It's coming to the end of the Rod Hull thing, and the credits are rolling, and they're about to cut back to me, and I'm thinking, you're supposed to pronounce things as they're pronounced in the programme. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like with it's bands, continuity. isn't it? You've got to give bands the name that they give themselves. Yes. You can't choose to call her Dion Warwick when she's Dion Warwick or whatever. Yeah. Right. So I, I turn my own microphone on, turn my camera on, because it's all self fault At 4.3 million kids, I go, Rod Hull, the great fucker. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, inch perfectly, that is exactly <coughs> what I said. And what were Ofcom like in those days? Well, here's the interesting thing. I went into the next thing, sooty or whatever. Did you keep hold of it? You were professional, you didn't, you didn't give anything well, away. Well, what was interesting was, um, I'm, I'm doing this on my own, right, but there is still a gallery full of people next door, right? <laughs> yeah. And 
I, I, I glanced to my right, and there were about six faces, and they were all craning round and looking at me because I just said, The Great Bucker. Yeah. On children's telly. Yeah. So I faded myself down, and we went into the programme, and I got on the old internal phone. I phoned my boss, Denise, and I said, You might be getting a bit of flack here. I said, Because I've just called Rod Hull the Great Bucker. It was a slip. If the papers get hold of it, you know, it'll be a joke thing. Mm. And, and all I can do is say, I'm sorry, but what I didn't do at the time was apologise, yep. because then it would have drawn attention yeah, to Yeah, you it. highlight it then, and everyone realises. Right. Well, you know, we didn't have emails in those days, but there were phones and uh, letters and all the rest of it. To the nearest hundred, how many complaints do you think? Oh, especially in those days. I mean, was that was that mid Mary Whitehouse? Mm. <sighs> None. Really? Not a single one. And you know why? It was because although there would have been some adults listening, kids wouldn't have thought anything of it. No, they wouldn't have got it. But you're an adult, and you're not really listening, are you? Mm. So when you hear that, you go, Nah. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did he just say it? No. Nah. Back to the cooking. He can't have. Yeah. And, you know, things weren't taped and up, stuck up on YouTube then. I'd, like, I'd, pay, I'd pay to see it on YouTube if anybody's got it. Oh, that, that, would be, that would be genius. But then again, even if as an adult, if I was watching that, I'd have probably laughed rather than complained. Yes. Because you knew what you wanted to say. Yeah. And you knew it was obviously a slip. So yeah. But Rod Hull, the great fucker, would have all got... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He meant to say forget. He's that fucker. Seamus isn't leaving me alone. Seamus is um, emailing again and making out that he doesn't like me or something. Really, wow, well, loves me. Obviously, Seamus isn't his real name, so they're hiding behind an alter ego when they're off on JP. Yeah. So what's that all up? Hey, Tommy, is Rod Hull that bloke who spent his entire life with his arm stuck up that bird's butt? Hey, I, people make a very good career out of that these days. What? Sticking well, their arms at women's butts? What? <laughs> what? What are you talking about gynaecologists? <laughs> <laughs> gynaecologists, porn stars. I used to sometimes pretend to be somebody else down the wine bar. Right. When I was young, free and single. Yeah. Before I did a bit of telly, because obviously you can't then. No. And what worked best was pretending to be a tennis player. Why? I don't know, because they think you're fit and rich. I'd pretend to be a South African. Ray Moore. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm over in this country for the tennis. Are you coming along to the still? Uh, you know, it kind of it was interesting. And I'll tell you what, it was interesting for me as well, because it's quite nice to be somebody else. Because you, you sometimes get bored being Matt. I've been somebody else before. You know when you're at posh dudes that you don't really know anyone, you've had yeah. to wear a suit for no reason. Yeah. And you kind of pretend to be a bit richer and a bit oh, more successful yeah. than you are. Yeah. And I've done that a couple of times, and it is thoroughly, thoroughly good fun. Yes. I've never so who have you been? I've never been brave enough to pass on a po pass off a pile. I've always been Matt because easy that way. Yes. That's because true. if you give a fake name, you've then got to remember yeah. that fake name when you've had ten pints. Yeah. And if you give an accent, you've got to remember the accent every yeah, time you talk to accents. somebody. So I've always been Matt. I've always sounded like me. What I've sort never of been brave enough to do the pass. But oh, I've um, backgrounds. Have you heard? True story. I well, dealt a bit on the stock market. I inherited some shares, kept them for a while, swapped them around, sold them, made some good money. But I've just taken that to the next level. So yes, I, I deal on the stock. Market, portfolio, you know, bear bonds, um, all that kind of stuff. I've uh, yeah. made four hundred and fifty thousand pounds in the last three months just from picking up the phone twice. Beautiful, hmm? and people believe you. People are like, "Wow, how did you get into this?" Yeah. Well, I just happened upon it. Really, I was conned once by a con man. He took seven and a half grand off me. Right, and what became apparent as I was trying to pursue him to get the money back was that the thing was he believed it. Right, he it's, genuinely he conned himself believed yeah. in the fantasy that he'd sold me. He genuinely believed it. He couldn't understand what I was trying to say mm. in telling him that I'd seen through his tissue of lies. Mm. Interesting. The worst thing I ever tried to pretend to be in the wine bar, didn't get me any was a gynaecologist. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it took me a while to work out why, because women don't want to be romantically involved with somebody who has Sort of technical reasons for. <laughs> well, for the other thing is, do you have a portable kit in your boots with a clamp and? <laughs> no, I just told him, look, see how trim my fingernails are. Oh, doesn't matter. So that it was fun. Get that... stuck underneath. Disgraceful. That was fun.
That was um, good. Lovely to have you back for tonight. I'm glad Paul. James took a holiday, but you'll be pleased to know that he'll be back next week at the usual time, which is 8 o'clock in the UK. Good day to you, podcasters. And if you're listening live, yeah? Mm. Play Radio UK have teamed up with Virgin Wines to...